Vox fan right it's from Super Whales. Uh, we got some nice teams here. I see my beautiful plant up there. You know that that that, that was uh, sponsored by yours truly. Mmm, look at that delicious. Mm. Dare we say best plant in the game? I mean, it's 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 up there. That's for damn sure. For arena, it's, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very very good. The thing about this, the only problem, only downside, depends on what range you're in in the brackets, uh, or rather in the arena, yeah, ladder. Because if you're running into tons of poison and you don't have a Biden somewhere, you're in trouble. However, we can see here, Spam and Rice whipping out a Biden's backliner with Mosquito Kestrel. Are you kidding me? What is this backliner? That actually, to be honest with you, looks like a nightmare to play against. I'm not going to lie. It has the range like card, it. the heal. Oh my goodness. But Elaborate, but please, Steven. I mean, it's just a replacement for the zigzag, right? We've seen a lot of um, Kestrel plants, but he's running the zigzag because it's a little bit better in like some of the plant matchups as well. It does more damage and it can heal you for more. Obviously has less shield though. That's literally the one downside. I think it's weaker against like some aqua body types and whatnot. But other than that, it's just a beautiful plant. Uh, has great speed as well. But what I want to look at here, Elijah, is look at Moonlight's lineup. Like we're talking about spam, but look at Moonlight. He has a Winghorn Poison Axie in the front, <laughs> a Toothless Mech in the middle, and an Immortal Plant in the back, or kind of Immortal Plant. It's got a Razor Bite. Dude, this is disgusting. And somehow or another, this is like, well, I can't say it's a hard counter, but it's pretty damn close gonna depend on rng obviously if that mech dusts off the plant in the back then you know moonlight's backline plant is gonna terrorize the shrimp at the middle and the shrimp at the middle is no good on the back door against the plant so he's forced to go front but he doesn't have amazing damage to go front there's bone sale there moonlight pulling out all the stops it's gonna be an uphill battle for spam and rice Dude, this is this is crazy like like moonlight's lineup gives me a headache i'll tell you that <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, is my shrimp getting stunned? Do I kill the front? Do I like, is my mech, is a mech gonna go into the back, kill me? You know, like, he's got a lot of options available to him as long as he draws the card still. Like, the, the way I see it is if his frontliner dies, you know, things can get really tricky for Moonlight. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're right. But the, the problem here is, well, I'll tell you what it'll come down to, Theban, is gonna be the, 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 okay, Moonlight's biggest damage dealer against this team I mean, aside from the mech, right? Or aside from hitting the mech with the aqua is, is his plant up front, right? So he needs to get those sandals, those beaches. And hey, that's a good start wow. with two beaches and a Gota. He elects to pass. Now, probably why is he knows he's never under threat against that mech in, mm -hmm. pretty much, right? Because the mech's usually always going to want to go back door in this matchup. So I think he's waiting to see a bone sale maybe or some of the high shield cards from the dusk up front. Mm -hmm. I would have, yeah, hard to say exactly. Yeah, it, it, it would feel awkward, right? Just playing like a Gota and a Cattail like casually. Maybe that would have been the best like available play like he could have had just if you want to play some cards there. Um, I think patience in this situation is not a bad idea. Yeah. The other thing to note is there's no energy steal anywhere. So you don't need yeah. to rush those cards that do good damage and have good shield when you can wait for a little bit of a better opportunity. It does seem unlikely that like that front plant gets touched here at all for a long time. So you're probably not going to be getting much value out of the shield. So there's that. But he does go for the other pass. Looks like S Spam knows that. He's not really worried about his plant up front. Mm -hmm. um, he's waiting, he's waiting. And God, man, this is just going to be... Uh, this is going to be so interesting. So we're going to be heading into round three. I, I think... What are, you, what are you seeing here as far as the patience on both sides? Well, it looks like Moonlight doesn't really have the draw yet that he's going for. It looks like he's just waiting for the back door. Yeah, he really wanted to just be able to stun that shrimp like, uh, and just leave it stunned so the midliner is a bit protected. I don't know. It's, it's tough. I, I think this is super tough for Moonlight because as soon as Spam decides to just you know throw the cards at this dusk, like that mech is going to die like really fast to the shrimp. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough in that sense. But like, I mean, then again, if, if like we said, if Moonlight takes out the backline plant, what is Spam's yeah. win condition? How does he get this done? Oh, God, he's going, going, he's going front into Cattail. He's going front into Cattail with two furballs. Oh, my God. But the thing is, can he kill him here? Yeah, but like all the cards. Now Spam mm -hmm. has every option under the sun. 
right? And that's a big deal in Axie Infinity. He gets the damage out. That's what matters. Yeah, yeah and he the went shield right. benefits as well, something we did not think we were going to be seeing in this game. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the Mosquito going to dust off the dusk. This is what you were talking about. Exposed mech. A deer in headlight is gone. About to get dropped. And look oh, at Spam wow. being a savage. He knows he's got wow. two energy and no defense. He's going with the most efficient kill possible. Perfect. That was very, very well done. Perfect. I mean, he knows that Mech also doesn't have much shield either, and he's not going to protect it. So very, you know, cool, calm, collected play by Spam there. Whew. This is... I mean, he does have the Razor Bites against the Shrimp, but then the Graveland and the Hatsune... Uh... Yeah. Uh, eh, it's not looking great. We'll see. He also. I mean, the thing is, he can't turn off the mosquito, right? That's it. That like at that point, the game's just over because yeah. he can't turn off the mosquito. And that's one of the sick things about this backliner of spam and rice uh, that you talked about earlier is how powerful that mosquito is going to be in the plant one v ones, and they're so plentiful. You're running into plants constantly, and you're getting way more damage in with the mosquito. It's like a hundred damage of a heal, and we're seeing spam going for the disables. Interesting that he decided to rip that off there. Um, doesn't really do anything. Not sure what. I, I know he's going going right for the crippling here, and I guess now he just gravels, so it doesn't really matter. But. He I don't even know if he needs to even... gravel. I think he can just play two. I think he can just play two um, mosquitoes and a Biden's every turn, and just like that's it. Never die. Never and die. And do damage. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. If he needs to. Yeah. I, no, I guess you're... one gravel is okay to like turn off. You know, just for one turn. Yeah. Um, look at the. It, it, you're right. No, it doesn't matter. He doesn't need it. He just has to play mosquitoes until until we go to Blood Moon. We might be here for a while, folks. Pull up. Get your popcorn out. <laughs> take a snack break because we got two plants staring at each other and uh it, these can be lengthy but you know what while we're waiting i just want to say that i love the i love that mosquito and the other reason why is because what are we facing a lot in arena these days are we facing a ton of aquas no we're not zigzags better against those builds but mosquito is better against all of the plants dusks that you're going to see at and the bugs midline on too. these builds and and bugs it's better against those as well in, ter in terms of damage output. You're put. You're right. Mm -hmm. Whew, he's gonna get a big clip off here. That's for sure, though. But the problem is, you, you literally can do nothing now. Like, mm -hmm. and and the heels gravel. Like he's got two mosquitoes, but he can't play the gravel again because the hot soon. And this is what I was kind of saying. That's now, all right. Next turn, he's gonna get two more mosquitoes and back to full he goes. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And you know, the problem too is in these in-between turns for Moonlight, he actually doesn't have Zigzag himself. So he actually can't heal up. And we're just seeing a lopsided matchup here at this point. I mean, he can get crits though. That could happen. Good he point. Could, he could get crits on those cactuses. Oh, oh my he God, gets one what's... there. Oh my goodness. He's okay. Mm -hmm. Two mosquitoes. The... He's here, dude. He's just gonna keep redrawing the mosquitoes. He's got five cards in his hand. He draws the next three. Next I get turn, it. Two I get mosquitoes. it. But we got a four card clip incoming, Theban. A four card clip. Okay. He is going first, so he's gonna heal. He up. needs the crits. But what about Blood Moon? What about Blood Moon? Nah, he's just dead. He's already dead. All right, rip. It he got exciting the there, but he, he's not, already dead. Yeah, not enough. Not mosquito enough. too powerful i mean moonlight like if he couldn't backdoor and kill that axie like he wasn't gonna win that game like that that was pretty much it like he had to kill that axie unless he could somehow kill you know the shrimp and the frontliner right and then like get the mech to deal with the backliner even then like it, it wasn't gonna happen it was a really rough matchup i think uh spam just had a perfect team for this first game like uh, whatever he was thinking of uh, bringing out for game one like uh, whatever he expected the opponents to deal with his mech or whatever stuff and it's really smart it, it, it was really smart it was really smart i mean we could have been having a different conversation if we saw an insane round two or three draw from the mech right and he got in there got back there even still the problem Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure he would have needed the, you know, in most cases, the double backdoor attack to actually get rid of that plant. And by that point, 
By which I mean, as long as that plant can put up some shield, mm -hmm. right? 75, 100, or whatever. I don't know how what cards exactly his shield were, were, but he had Bidens back there. He had stuff that could prevent the damage. And by the time he backdoors twice, I mean, he's going to be pretty depleted. Mm -hmm. I mean, he would have had to definitely like be chucking out shields like every single turn for sure. But uh, that, that mech can actually like one shot um the plant if uh, it doesn't have enough shield for sure yeah that's definitely true as if he's sitting there naked that's gonna be a dead plant <laughs> power of mechs man is backdoor kill plants no problem the highest hp axes in the game no problem also i guess that plant also has less health because it has kestrel uh, mosquito and gravelant right so that's true two it was like parts and a bird part yeah, I was noticing that. It was like 470 or something around mm -hmm. there. Definitely less than normal. Yeah, so I think even with like two Bidens, a full clip might have even actually killed him, possibly. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact math on it, but um, it's it's very high up there. I think game two is going to be underway for sure. Moonlight is going to have to make some adjustments because that Razor Bite uh, plant, although it was a cool idea, you know, conceptually, uh, getting the combo cards on your frontliner and your midliner at the perfect time is just, I think, a little too difficult. Yeah, absolutely. So I wonder what he's going to bust out here in the second game. I wonder what he has up his sleeve. He surely cannot feel that confident uh, with that team comp there. Resources a little too thin as we got to saw. It was as we got to see. It was interesting because on paper, I was leaning towards him in the beginning, <clears throat> but. In reality, it didn't look as strong. Uh, it didn't turn out to be as strong as it looked at first glance. So I don't know. Maybe he has. I don't even know against against spam and rice what you would really want to to have there because you kind of need a durable backliner because he has the shrimp or a hairbird where you can just spam the cards right pretty quickly mm -hmm. and get yourself into a 1v1 um or get yourself into you know your your mid and front doing the work from there on out which can be the purpose of the hair bird a lot of the time you, you know get what your value needs? and then you move on you know what he needs he needs a scaly spoon plan <laughs> <laughs> he needs a scaly spoon i'm kidding but it, it would be really hard though still right i mean i guess if you have gravel ant it's fine even with the scaly spoon like he kestrels you know you're gonna dish back the damage which is kind of nice, and the gravel land, you know, is going to stop the mosquito from happening. Gosh, I hate plants. I'll tell you that, Elijah. I hate plants. I, I hate the fact that, you know, gravel land is a, is, a, is a card that people want to play uh, and, like, be this immortal thing that just shuts down everything your opponent has. Well, I tweeted once that it's interesting that plants ended up being the most broken class in Axie. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that, we, did, that. we didn't foresee happening. And I said it kind of in jest, but it's also kind of true. Like, they're definitely, if you add in all the double plant teams, it's got to be the most uh, prevalent Axie in the top 100 for sure. Yeah. Uh, and bugs. it's funny. It's they close don't, between and they don't and even plants. get nerfed. You know, they're, they're played at the front as a the, the the like the most played frontline tank Axie in the game. And then yeah. they played in the middle like a carry playing the back as a carry you know it, it, what can't plants do but they always get love <laughs> they, they always get love. meanwhile aqua players all around the world you know you have like one build that works you know consistently and they just get everything nerfed dude the aqua nerfs were rough um it's it's you know here's the thing about axie is even though with nerfs to your team and whatnot it's easy to complain about everything but there's always going to be people who who don't complain and they just work harder. And there's people in the top 10 right now that have, or at least one player in the top 10 that runs double aqua. And that just goes to show anyone else who's doing it that if he can do it, if you work hard enough, then you can get there too. Um, Indez is running a double aqua budget team right now. I don't know exactly where he is on the rankings, not quite top 100, but you better believe he's going to be climbing with it and outplaying people like crazy with it, right? And he, he paid 0 0.08 for it. So... It's not about the axes always. It's about uh, it's about you mostly, and then from there you'll you know if you're smart and you study you'll figure out good team comps. And um, but it's really your in-game execution that's gonna take you the farthest. 
I'm also I'm referring to in the top ten. Oh, what is this? Uh, what, what, are we are we in a, are we in a, Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, he went with the he went with the god build. They 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 put a mirror in the middle of the in the middle of the field. Uh, yeah, they're but just let looking me just at each other. Advantage, uh, advantage moonlight here. I think. I agree. Just, yeah, it depends on. Here's the thing. If spam can get off like enough, uh, if he can harass that mech with the winghorn chomps and make it mm -hmm. so it's difficult for him to actually get off the back door, then spam will be in good shape. If he doesn't, you know, there's gonna be a lot of RNG in this one. It's a mirror matchup, so definitely gonna have to see uh, exactly how it plays out. Boy, oh boy, these guys have the god build at hand, and it is a scary one. Theban, why don't you just, for anyone who doesn't know why this is so insane, let's do like a quick recap while we wait for the cards. What do you what do you want to tell them? I I feel like at this point people know how dumb mechs are. Well, I guess I'll explain why mechs are dumb. It's because recently they've changed the damage calculations on skill bonus when you pair cards together. Um, so for mechs who have the highest skill in the game, when you use these low damage cards, they get an additional you know flat damage to their attack. So juggling balls and twin needles uh they end up doing a lot more damage than they actually should so if you pair two juggling balls and two twin needles together the max damage they will deal is 600 to a plant body type for two energy and there's no cards in the game that can do that on any other axis uh yeah pretty insane you can backdoor stuff with two energy and kill a plethora of axes by which i mean you play toothless dual blade double twin tail and things die um and it's crazy so mm -hmm. you'll kill reptiles and dusks and axes that you should not be killing with two energy backdoor combinations <laughs> yeah i think you made a very key point in this game um about spam if he doesn't get the chomp i think he's in huge trouble in this game uh, yeah, he is. <laughs> like he's he, in terrible shape if he doesn't. Even if he gets it, it depends on how quickly everything gets executed. Because he can still get it, let's say round one, round two. Uh, spam maybe gets rid of it in round three. Mm -hmm. And then even if, or sorry, Moonlight gets rid of it in round three. Round four, he kills Spam's mech. By then, Spam kills Moonlight's Dusk maybe. But who has who has the better situation there, right? You know, Moonlight still has a mech. It's going to be tricky. It's a lot of backdoor action happening here. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to seeing this mirror matchup. But intuitively, it seems like the mech that's most protected is going to have the advantage. And in this case, mm -hmm. it's Moonlight, which, by the way, hats off to him here. If he pulls this off, it's a stone read on... Uh, it's a stone read that Spam is going to switch teams even a, a bit, right? Kind yeah. of, but also it would have been good against that plant again, perhaps uh, in efforts... In the, exactly, in the last because game. he would have had the you know the winghorn still available to stun the shrimp and uh, or like you know do some stuff with the other team as well that he's playing. And I think in this game, one advantage spam does have is that he's got the faster axes on the winghorn and the mech um, than the counterparts in this game. Um, not only ID but uh, just having the bird part available where Moonlight has the aqua parts on his axes here and. Secondly, I will say spam has to avoid two things from happening. One, the toothless like jumping in, but also himself getting winghorn. If he gets winghorn, that is two turns before he can stun that mech, and that gives two yeah. turns for the mech to go off. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. In fact, uh, yeah. Well, let's 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 see. I mean, I, I think that will probably be one of the first things that we see out of Moonlight if he draws it is going to try and slow down spam's ability to stun his mech um and then of course on top of that the icing on the cake here in this matchup is that we've got discards up front that can throw everything off so let's see what happens they're both <laughs> going for the discards to try and disrupt their opponents oh toothless rip lost a toothless there on moonlight Ouch. that's lost, rough is that both wing horns? i couldn't see i couldn't see it exactly but you know moonlight is going to be craving that other toothless and he might not get it for a while it just depends he might get it this next round i don't know but the fact that he lost one already is bad really bad elijah he just lost two wing horns on spam are you probably kidding, the most important card for spam both of the wing horns are gone
Now, the, there is another factor here, guys. Moonlight doesn't know what cards he discarded. So he might play his hand as if Spam is about to throw out that Winghorn soon. So there's a way that he could possibly outplay himself, uh, obviously. Because um, in Axie Infinity, you don't know what your opponent's hand looks like in most situations. And he oh also God, has a chomp, getting a, too. He's getting a chomp, too. So he, he's slowing him down, even though he doesn't need to. But still, I mean, just the fact that this is already doing damage on that Dusk, that's... That's, uh... Oh, oh dual, dual blade, blade gone. Man. That's big, too. Jeez. So did spam right there. All the discards are popping off. Now, here's the thing. To go back to your point, Theban, I mean, I think the only... Like, the, the worst way that looks for Moonlight is he just loses a Twin Tail, which isn't the biggest of deals, I think. Right? I think what you're talking about is, let's say he draws a Twin Tail next round. Well, actually, he doesn't have to worry about it because Spam and Rice is stunned. But there might be a round where if he doesn't have a great hand, but he has a single Twin Tail, he might play it anticipating the Chomp to leave himself unstunned. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I was more thinking along the lines like he, he since one of his Toothless got discarded and if he has a bunch of damage cards, he might just try to go through the front or something. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to get stunned. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, Furball gone. One du dual blade down, one furball down. These everyone, everyone is getting delayed right now because uh, the discards. Mm -hmm. The airplane is still on the ground here. We have not been cleared for liftoff, not even close. We got to wait for some stuff to come through here. Oh, it's getting tense, Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting tense. Oh, spam! He's pulling the trigger. He needs to go through the front because he's like, dude, my mech's gonna die next turn. I can't wait one more turn. So he's pulling the trigger here. He's trying to get value. This is very... And then look what did I, oh, what there did I call there. That single There's one. The single twin tail. I and he lost the gonna... toothless. Oh, he lost no. the second toothless. Oh, no. It's gone. What is this game? What is this game? What is this what game? What is this game? Chat, Nobody has any us. jumps. <laughs> Dude, he's using the bone sails here to rip off the uh, the <laughs> the plant. And he's and I think he poisoned. Knows he... It's a little safer. He feels. Oh no! Oh, oh this that's is so terrible. Disgusting. Oh no, that's so bad. Oh no, spam going in for the all the cards. To be honest, but at the end of the day, the problem here is that no, I think this is spam's game. It all came together in the end. Hang on, wait. Not quite yet, right? He needs to get the third card on Spam to stun this mech, or is that mech is going to go to the back and kill Spam's mech? Because it's poisoned, it's got lower health. Uh, true, but what are the chances that he doesn't get a third card? I mean, seems like, yeah, there it is. Okay, he's yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. There was, a, there was just a small chance, you know? A small yeah. possibility. No, you're right, you're right. And, you know, I think Spam in, in this series said, this is my build, you're not going to beat me, with my build, and he mm -hmm. showed up and showed out here in this in this second game, uh, and somehow got it done amidst a, an insane string of discards and non happenings in the first three oh. rounds. Oh it wait a minute, no, it was actually no, no. close because if he somehow had a read that the chomp was coming and not the back door, then if he waited one more turn and he got this off, he would have actually sealed the game. I think. Well, you know but what's it's insane? It's so hard what's, to do that. What's insanely unfortunate, and this is one of those, those things that you can't always calculate in Axie, mm -hmm. was that plant last standing and the yeah. furball yeah, and dual exactly. blade went into the last stand plant and not the dusk midliner. I mean, that is about as unlucky as you can get. Yeah. So credit to Moonlight for putting up a tough fight. Spam's one of the best players in the game right now. He's putting together really great team comps and he's playing at such a high level. So no shame there in, in losing that series. But, you know, it, it, it's definitely interesting to look at that mirror matchup, which I must say we're probably going to see that a little more often mm -hmm. in this tournament, I must say, because people are bullish on that build. Agreed. That was... Um... That was a very strong showing from Spam, and you can see like how you know calm he was even till the very end. Like although both his Winghorns got discarded, uh, he was very patient. Like he pulled the trigger on that back mech when he felt like, oh, it's turn four. Like I really can't wait anymore. He started going through the front. It was uh, very well executed. Congrats to Spam. He will be now top four 
Um, his next match will be against Dizzy Boy, but we are not quite there yet. Our next series coming up is going to be Thunder from Axie GG versus Tersake from Meditate. Ooh, the MTA Axie GG face off. We got you. Love to see it, right? You love yeah. to see it. Two two heavy hitting guilds, and uh, we're gonna have to see how that goes down. I'm excited, obviously, rooting for Terasek. Um, I have no idea what Thunder. I believe they both have the same comp again, as I mentioned. So probably gonna see that get pulled out. Mm -hmm. I wonder if one of them will consider maybe not playing that or going for a hard counter. Like, here's the thing: if you know everyone's running this team, guess. So Indes won the Meta Guild Invitational, right? Which was just, it was a recent tournament that they did toward the end of this uh, series of Axie Infinity sponsored tournaments. And they brought on players from other games that have been successful in Hearthstone, plus some Axie Infinity high level players. So I'm facing Spam and Rice in the very first round. Indes and I were talking beforehand and, you know, what did he end up going with? He went with Double Plant Bird, Indes that is, because I think he recognized that Spam could be one of the toughest players in the tournament and, and someone he very likely faces in a finals. So he picked a team that he felt like could hard counter it. Two Plants, Toothless Bird. Now it's still RNG dependent because if Spam gets his backdoor off before Indes, then it's all good for Spam. However, the Bird has a speed advantage. So he went with that, Gravelant at the middle, he ends up winning the whole tournament because he's the GOAT. But the point is, is you need to be thinking about, like, if everyone wants to run this comp in this game, what can you play that's going to give you an advantage? Now, I should have mm -hmm. heeded that advice because I went with something that was a little bit more balanced in that tournament. Spam beat me round one. Great series, though. Had a lot of fun playing him. But we'll see if somebody is able to uh, crack the code here of the backdoor mech and the bone sale midline i will tell you something elijah the moment you crack the code it, it, the timing needs to be perfect because when you crack the code and everybody follows suit then everybody's playing that and now that becomes the meta right and then someone else is gonna crack you you know so it's like the timing is very important as to when you're doing it especially in arena so that uh, you're the one you know who's left holding the bag um and it's all yours no you're absolutely right why don't we take a minute to touch base here on our yeah. sponsor and also on something I really want to talk about frequently throughout this is the YGG donation fund we can give to. So we do have um, a command in chat. Uh, ex if you do exclamation donate, you guys can uh, go to the website. Um, oops, I think that's the wrong one. I think that's for your tips, bro. Yeah, I don't know why it shows that. I, I that, that's that's definitely um, the wrong one. My bad. <laughs> no, there's another one. There's another one there. Uh, you guys can see it. The one that says YGG Philippines dot Ethereum, um, and then there's also a Ron in there. You can go there and you can donate um, if you want to towards a great cause of helping the people in the Philippines who have been affected by the typhoon. Um, it's very unfortunate, especially during this time uh, of the year. You know, it's uh, Christmas and it is a time of giving. And I'm very, it's very saddening, honestly, Elijah, to hear about like the sufferings that people go through when it's supposed to be like a really joyous time. And I tell you something, like I, I lived in the Philippines for four years and like people there start celebrating Christmas or like start preparing for Christmas in September. They call it the burn months. Okay. Mm. Like as soon as there's September, you can already hear the Christmas music in the malls. Okay. Like that's how much they look forward to it. And yeah, I mean, you can tell us a little bit more about uh, on chain monkeys and what they're doing. And, um, I think we have a special guest later, uh, as well. Yeah. We have a YGG representative, which I'm really happy to be talking to. Let's put a pin in all of that for now. I'll come back to On Chain Monkey okay. a little later. We have a game up. Let's pull that up right now. Um, but guys, whatever you can give on those links, uh, on those addresses for donations, it goes a long way. It, the, the amount, if you add it up, a, a few bucks here and there, it stacks up. I think they've already raised a couple hundred thousand, uh, right? And also YGG is a tr as trusted as you can get 
of a member in the community. When I think about like where money goes when I donate, it's important for me to have faith in that person, that process or that organization. And YGG, I've met Gabby in person. He is the OG of a, a lot of this um, play to earn movement scholarships in terms of doing it on a mass scale. I saw that man get emotional around what Axie has been able to do for the Philippines. I mean, in terms of authenticity, in my opinion, my read on it was it was very high and everyone there, everyone in the Axie community basically agrees. The Axie Infinity Team, Sky Mavis, they know that he's a trusted family member. So in my book, you know, I'm happy to give there. Onchain Monkey was very gracious, five Ethereum donation. And uh, guys, give what you can, okay? For sure. And if you want to use that other link that we have in there, that's fine. I will make sure everything will be forwarded to um, the relief funds no matter what. So um, if that's easier for you guys, feel free <laughs> to, to use that link. <laughs> we'll get things sorted out. No worries. Um, so we yeah. got a game here. We got Terrasake from Meditate and we got Thunder from Axie GG. We see once again the Dream Mech, but this one is a little bit slower here. Elijah has a uh, reptile eyes, but that does make it tankier, which is nice. Um, so uh, uh, Thunders has an Arco on it, not dual blade. So it's got that speed flexibility, which is really cool too. And Thunders playing it with a hair bird with balloon in the back. Uh, that's right, and he, but he does have his own threat at the mid, which is pretty sick because it's protected, as we were talking about earlier. However, we also have the chomp threat that could slow that down. Both players have discards up front. Now, that 384 HP, that is interesting. That's a beefy mech back there, has yeah. aqua ears, reptile eyes. If we do end up in a 1v1, though, the problem for Tirsik is Thunder has Arco. Uh, so, and he's faster anyway. So I think mm -hmm. like definitely advantage Thunder if it comes down somehow to mech versus mech. It may or may not. Depends on if Thunder can get that back door off. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have to see how that goes. There's a lot of things Tersek can do to prevent that as we saw last game. We have discards. We have midline chomp. I think here's the thing with the hair bird that we're probably going to get to see is... It's so strong, like, the, you get so much good value out of it, usually in the first couple rounds, that even if it dies, it was worth it. Um, it almost always attacks first as well, which is great. And you speed up your hand with the hairs. Now, if you mm. have this bird and somehow draw terribly for the first, like, two, three rounds, and then, you know, from there get backdoored, yeah, that's obviously awful. But uh, in most cases, the Axie Infinity Gods will help you out a bit with some cards and you'll be able to uh, get really great value from, from that build. I mean, the more you talk about these two teams, I feel like, you know, Terrasake's general game plan has to be ignoring that plant. Because that mech and the bird are too big of threats in this game um, for Terrasake. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that for sure. I mean... Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, it's funny too how these teams are built. None of them have energy gain, so you're really you're stretched a little bit thin in terms of what you can do. However, again, we talked about how broken the um, twin tail is, and they have triple zero cost, which can make up for that. Who do you have here, by the way? Like, if you had to choose, because oh well, here we go. Let's take a look. Oh my God, Thunder has all the mech cards. All he needs, oh, he loses one though. He still has a great hand. If he gets the Toothless, that could be really, really bad news for Tersek. Yeah. Sorry, what was that card he just lost there? He he lost, uh, he lost an, I think he had another Arco. I, I'm pretty sure that's what that was. So, okay. but at the end of the day too, I think it's one of the weaker combinations though um, against that high HP mech that he might actually throw a Toothless Arco Double Twin and not kill it because it's got 384 HP. If it manages to put up a little bit of shield, I think... Okay, it was a furball. That's what it was. It was a furball? Don't worry. Okay. Ch chat's got us. Chat, chat's, chat's got, got us. us. Okay. Yeah, so good. it was it was a furball that was lost there. Um, Actually, one thing I want to point out to you as well. Did you notice that Thunder has, what is that, two Aqua parts on his bird? I did notice that actually. I noticed yeah. the aqua eyes. And so I was this a bit... actually allows him against a shrimp to not get three carded on turn one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He drew the back door Ooh. and didn't go for it. 
which I think okay. is very risky because of discards. He oh, loses he got, an he Arco. Wait, is it enough though? I don't think that was enough damage with that backdoor. It was only Arco and two twin tails. Yeah, but if the mech does nothing, it is, right? So, I mean, do you go for it? I think it's if the mech does nothing, that not that a kill? Indez will know. I don't think so. That, 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 was, use... that, was, that was not enough. But uh, he did have, he does get the cards now though, and he kills the Axie that can, you know, discard his back door. He has okay, it available. Dead, dead bird incoming. But the problem now is what's... Okay, so he's going to miss on the Bone Sail, put a, another Grass Snake on him, get a card back. Now, mm -hmm. is Terasic going to be able to pull off the double backdoor, by which I mean you backdoor the bird and then get the redraw? I can't remember what he got discarded uh, already from Thunder's Plant, but I don't think one of the Toothlesses have been discarded. So if he gets lucky enough, he might be able to do a repeat in a round or two. Yeah, and you, you oh, can see man. what uh, Terasek did there as well. He went. He did not go for the chomp play because he expected the balloon to come out. Um, oh no! What is this play? Where? Why is he playing? Why is uh, Terasek playing toothless twin tail with no fur ball? Hmm. I don't understand that one, but it's definitely going to be. It's definitely looking pretty bad here. Well, he... Oh, wow. He had the out. Like, if he just didn't play... Hold on. Hold up. Hold up a second. He's, no, he's but... faster now. He is faster because he's lower no, health. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not, oh, he's he's not, not, he's not he's faster. Not, he's okay, not. never mind. He's not going to be faster because he has the reptile part. Of course. I have no I... idea what that was. Um, yeah. That was awkward. For sure. Yeah. I have no clue. If he we just waited and he had <laughs> and he had to if he had toothless bite like the next turn, like he was gonna kill that mech. Right? That yeah. mech is depleted. The mech literally used Arco, Furballs, Twin Tails, like it's used almost literally everything. Um just to get through the first two axes there. So it was just a matter of like being patient, getting your full clip, go to the back, kill it. The plant is like easy peasy after that. I think someone said that they think he was lagging when he ended turn, which I think is very possible. Um, but at the same time, even even if he was, I don't know if, if he would have had enough with those cards with the furball. No, he did not. He did not have enough. Yeah, like, he maybe he could have done it. Then he could have redrawn like the um, Toothless Bite and killed him the next turn. But even then, I think like it, it, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, yeah. Me, at least. Yeah. But that's okay. As we said earlier, there's pressure in these tournaments and things catch up to you. But the main point is that you have to just recover and focus on the second game. I know Terzik's a great player and we'll see if he can pull this one off. Um, and it looks like... I'm trying to catch up to the chat here. Yeah, you know what? The other thing is is there's probably some nerves for Terzik. I don't think he's been playing too many tournaments lately. Um... But I'm hoping we get a competitive series, right? Because that's the most fun we saw in the first series. It went to a game three. It was a blast. And uh, we'll have to see if if we can pull off or if that can happen again. Yeah, I think um, it's it's tough matchup, man, when you have the slower mech. Like, I was even thinking the whole time, like, oh, this mech is like 58 speed. That's 58 speed. So whoever's lower health is going to have like an advantage. And then later you're you're like it's not faster, dude. What are you talking about? It's like got a reptile part. It's it's like no matter how you look at it, it's like a tough situation. I mean, it's, it's what Axie is all about. Like having these parts, making sure that you have like the fastest Axie. I think it's probably like the most important trade in the game at the moment. Even on plants, Elijah. I think plants as well. They they want they're like opting for faster parts so that you know even the sandal guys like you want to be able to get those sandals on the bugs before they can attack you. Yeah, you know, situations like that. Yeah, speed has always been such a clutch uh, stat, even, you know, to this day. Back before, it was always the Aquas. You want them faster with lower HP or lower ID. Uh, it's just the way it is in Axie Infinity. Those are kind of like... You get your game to a certain level where, like, you're winning, you're beating people on outplays your top thousand right and then there comes a point where it's like you need that extra creme de la creme you need to then take the next step up to like the ultra axie 
where the speed is uh, going to get you there. We're in game two. And run it same, back. Same comps. Same mm -hmm. comps. Nothing's changed. We've got Tursic sticking with his mech on the back line, even though it's a little bit risky. He's feeling confident. I wonder what his other three axes were. I kind of wish I could see them. Uh, I'm assuming, though, that they weren't really good against this so comp I, of Thunder. I think he's playing plants in, the, in his other axes. All he needs is a Scaly Spoon plant. <laughs> I think he's playing Kestrel plant. Oh, uh, yeah. No, not going to cut it. Yeah. yeah. Not going to oh. cut it indeed. Um, but yeah, but back to our first topic we're talking about with the bird. How, how do you like it? The double aqua part bird. Yeah, I, I don't quite understand it. I was actually... The thing about that is... Against other birds, you're always going to be slower. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, how often are you getting into a 1v1 with a bird when you have a mech that can backdoor birds fairly easily? So the answer to that is probably not too often. So I guess having the extra HP allows for some like life-saving opportunities potentially but how much more hp is it isn't so it, it only it's, it's 12 it's 12 extra hp wow. i mean the okay. the most important thing because he has two right uh two aqua parts is six for each hp but the most important thing is you can get three carded by the shrimp so shrimp plus 220 damage cards if you're a full bird you die so now you don't die to that Big fan because I got to tell you, there's nothing more demoralizing <laughs> than oh, you're yeah. revved up, ready for a great Axie Infinity session, and you <laughs> match up against a Shrimpinator. You pass round one because you don't have a great play, thinking it's no big deal. <laughs> Boom. Easy clap. Shrimp, two cards, dead bird. Now, this has got to be another blunder on the skill bonus changes that an Aqua is capable of doing that because that was never the case very annoying indeed and i i really don't like i hate shrimp so much right now i don't know it's just so like coin flip right it, it, it's like even you play some of these winghorn guys you stun it but if they end up like drawing five cards anyway and they kill your backline it's just so awkward it's just people are staying away from playing these plants reptiles dusk in the back that the shrimps have just become so so popular yeah no you're right and I mean, the more I think about it, I think that that's a favorite Axie, actually, with the two Aqua parts, like, in the current situation, because there's definitely plenty of times where, like, you don't want to have to play a single Peace Treaty or a single Hair for the 30 Shield. Uh, so I like the protection there. Very nice. Mm. One sneaky raid down. That's pretty big, um, especially if you don't draw your next damage cards, and then you're always going to risk getting your cards discarded um, again the following turn. So if we're looking at this situation, interesting Tersic decided to wait on... Did he already have this combo with the Winghorn? Grass snake yes, comp? he did. Okay. So he's decided to wait, which I think makes sense because the mech like almost it. is... Yeah, he's never going to have that uh, combo round mm -hmm. one for the most part. So I think he's waiting for a more opportune time to pop that off and stun the midline. Cool as a cucumber. He knows game one didn't go his way, so he's, you know, getting his vibes on right now. There we go. And now, you know, Thunder has to use a card to get out of that stun, um, and he gets one extra turn. He does, uh, and there's probably nothing back. worse than, than having to use a, a furball. He might actually lose one here as well. Looks like the bone sale goes down. Probably one of the best cards that could have been discarded uh, for Terasik there. Yeah, for sure. And the... Uh, Oh. do is because he expected a winghorn to come out right like that's it but like at the end of the day it's like 50 50 what's gonna yeah. happen but yeah he wouldn't have been able to kill that guy so that's that's really the biggest issue and i don't know it's 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 complicated the game is complicated when it gets to that point already uh but it's incredible Tersake, you know he gets the w there he moves on um he's gonna be waiting for the winner of sequinox from bulls and twisted from player versus meta that's our last series uh from the top eight um it'll take probably a minute or so for those players to get started uh do you or actually let's ask chat chat who do you think is gonna be getting this uh next win here sequinox or twisted
We got some Sequinox, Twisted, Smiley Face. Ooh. Sequinox, um, I believe he's a Dota player and a Hearthstone player. Twisted is actually an ex-pro Hearthstone player as well. So we actually got two Hearthstone players uh, in this next series. Bulls, I think they're doing some great things out there. Um, they won that recent team tournament that they played in. Um, very, very interesting players. You know, they kind of came out of nowhere, right, Elijah? Are you talking about Bulls? Yep. Dude, they came out of they dropped out of the sky with like Damn. sick team compositions and people that know how to play i'm like what the heck is going on it's pretty even honestly sequinox and twisted you know who people are rooting for out here i'm excited to see this one because I want to see what some of these these new kids on the block are doing and like they're all super talented and have great team comps so you know there was a time when there was only a couple of teams competing against each other like ctg xegg uh levox and now the doors are really opening up in a new way mm -hmm. so i'm pretty hyped on that and to see kind of how it shakes out so before we get into the game, though, can you tell us a little bit more, Elijah, about um, our charity invitational for the new people coming into the stream? We got a nice 890 people in chat for yeah, our first ever invitational. I wonder if we can hit a thousand today. That would be amazing. Um, but yeah, let us know. Well, yeah, I mean, this is sponsored by OnChain Monkey. It's like I've said this before, it's my favorite PFP project in the space. They are all about NFTs for social good. And when I found that out about them, and I actually love the artwork personally, uh, I went for it and they were kind enough to partner with us and donate five Ethereum to the Philippines right now with what they're going through. So they put up the prize money for this, the Ethereum, and just super grateful that they were able to do that. And if we can pull up the other photo here, this is what the OCM1 versions look like. I think they're sick. They were created in one transaction on Ethereum and anyone who holds one is going to get an OCM2 version airdropped to them in 2022. So I hold 20 monkeys. I'm gonna get 20 um, second versions of them like this that the traits get transferred over. It's absolutely I love it. I love this project. That's just the artwork. But more importantly, they're about doing good things in the world exactly. and using the monkeys as like kind of like your avatar for doing well and for contributing. And this is one example that all the monkeys have shown up for this. Mm -hmm. We've donated. And let's like share the links real quick for the YGG donation before we get in the next game. Um, basically, we're asking everyone here if they can, whatever you're able to give, even if it's a dollar, if it's two dollars, like we have, um, uh, we have links here to make that happen. So there's a element elements. account in chat. Yep. Yeah. And also, if you want to use the stream elements tip line as well, you can do that. Everything will be forwarded to the relief funds, uh, so you can use that as well to have another option available um, for you guys. And one more thing uh, is, you know, Onchain Monkeys they gave five Ethereum. Yeah, like like that's incredible. And this is not the only time that they've, you know, done good for the people out there. There's so many incredible stories. If you guys want to check out their Twitter, their discord, join their community. They got a bunch of amazing people out there um, that you guys can mingle with. You know, maybe you want to just, you know, dip your toes a bit. Check out what the community is like before, you know, supporting the cause. Feel free to do that as well. Yeah. If you go into the Discord, like, it's just a blast. Everyone's super positive. I'm in there. I'm hanging out in there all the time. I love the Monkey Discord. And monkeys scratch each other's backs. Jiho's an investor in OCM as well. So connected here in the metaverse and just trying to look out for one another, right? That's kind of what it's all about. Let's jump into the action, Theban. All right. Do we got a game here? Yes, we do. I love when I see this, when, when I see this screen. That means we got some Axie action. Whoa, what is that? Midliner from Sequinox. Has this guy been sneaking up on Indez and watching Indez builds? Because that's uh, not quite we were what We talking Indes about that running. yesterday, weren't we? Yeah, we were. <laughs> he went out and bought a teal shell midliner right afterwards. Uh, it, it, this is an interesting one because I don't quite understand the wanting to have the Koi okay, there. Okay, I'll break mid. it down for you. I got you. Right. I got you. 
Okay. My, my brain my brain just started working at like warp speed okay so <laughs> he's thinking that this backliner so turn one we see a big play from twisted twisted's team is a very standard double aqua team with lots of damage he rips off the damage turn one because that's what you got to do you know cover your energy uh great play now back yeah. to this midline <laughs> of Sequinox. um so he's expecting backdoor on his mech and most of these mech backdoor teams they play like shrimp and they play mechs yeah. in the back right so when yeah. that mech gets backdoor now you got this koi aqua in the middle absolutely. who can 2v1 yeah. almost any situations even arco mechs no you're absolutely right so it has all come together in my head as well and that's a great point he's going to rely on the aqua however in this situation it's, so it's not working because it's not it's it's he doesn't the, uh, twisted doesn't even have a back door so mm -hmm. twisted is steamrolling in uh, in other words twisted is steamrolling oh my god your cattail value too oh you that, that, that massive so much cattail. that literally hurt my soul cattail value given to an aqua team oh, oh man. man absolutely insane and he also has the energy to boot so he's gonna have options here is that a dead aqua is that a dead aqua i think it is it's dead it's dead 100 it doesn't it's dead. matter it doesn't matter the the, no. the piranha i mean that i call this the rapier okay i call this aqua the rapier is about to rip through sequinox's lineup and check this out too uh for twisted he avoided 144 shield on that midline aqua by being patient and skipping round last round knowing that he hasn't seen any of those high shield cards and here comes the killing Hang on, blow though. this is a lot of damage from sequinox too with that skill bonus is this enough yeah. 102. Okay, oh 131. He got oh it. Oh god. Oh my goodness. The mech. Mechs aren't supposed to beat Aquas, but he does it. Sequinox does it. What did I just watch? It was like Twisted was ahead the entire time. Oh man. That was crazy. What a clutch mech performance. I wish we could watch that replay right here, right now, because I want to see where it went wrong. And I think it might have been, could it have been holding back, even though he had that 144 shield on that midliner, maybe Twisted was supposed to just go ahead and kill it and move at, move along with life, right? Twisted and get on. needed to speed up at least, minimum, right? He did. He sped up. He sped no, up. He, he did not speed up the previous turn. The, 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 the Teal Shell Aqua sped up. Did, did, That's why he attacked first. So the Teal Shell Aqua did some damage and then the mech finished it off is what you're yes, saying, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah, so what he needed to do was play at least one Koi. I, would that have yes. made him faster? It would have because... They, it would have made him faster. He's a, he's a, he's he a, a spiky pure wing. Aqua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pure yeah. Aqua versus Spiky Wing. And he didn't need to hold on to two Koi's for the mech. He didn't. He didn't. He, he didn't yeah. even... Oh, wow. That was insane. Damn. Yeah, I think he might have just passed a bit too much there. Like, thinking yeah. like he's got the clear win. But that mech does crazy damage. That was a bird card that dealt 131 damage. Like, to an like from a mech into an That's... aqua. The skill, skill is insane. Mech skill bonus is insane. But yeah, I, I, did, I do think the previous turn, he had to speed up at least. So he doesn't take damage from that Teal Shell guy. He just needed to, you know, do a nice clip into him uh, and then like speed up once again. And then he would have been able to just clean house, right? Yeah, absolutely. So he just, absolutely. He's just a little yeah. bit of a blunder there. It was a bit of a blunder. And I, you know what, though? I feel bad because like it, he underestimated the mech. But even I didn't like... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it coming either. 130 damage to uh, an Aqua on a mech. I mean, that's... Yeah. Isn't that more than what a bird does to uh, uh, uh No, I think bird close? does 138. That yeah, was, well, The mech did 131. It literally only dealt 7 less damage than a bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's still insane though. Like, it's not even the same class, but... It, like, that that's still really good. I think we got another game now. Let's see what's gonna happen here. We're gonna run it back again. Oh, looks like it. We're going to run it back. I mean, I think Twisted is still favored in this situation. He just has to give a little bit more respect, maybe, uh, to these axes. And to be fair, though, like, this mech is just as strong as an Aqua. <laughs> I don't I don't even know, man. This damage output is, is insane. It's as if they don't even have, like, reduced damage. Oh, no. They, they don't. They don't have reduced damage. I mean, when they attack an Aqua, it used to be that they, they did less than their base damage. I think, mm -hmm. like, it would be one or two damage less. 
now they're doing bonuses. Now, now the now the now the, now the fur balls are doing extra damage to aquas. Bro, the fur ball deals more damage than an aqua card into an aqua. You yeah. know. Like yeah. an, an aqua with an aqua card into an aqua, like 120 damage, does yeah. less damage than a furball does, which so, doesn't make any sense. So now, now can you guys see why uh, there's nothing more satisfying for me right now in the game than watching a plant kill a mech with double scaly spoon? Because yeah. the mechs are busted, and it feels nice to see see them get their um, see them have their uh, what are the word I'm looking for justice. It's nice to see justice serve, mm -hmm. right? Man, I, th this teal shell aqua, I love it. I really love it. Like, the, the 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 idea to put it in the middle is just beautiful. Like, it's so tanky, man. It's so tanky. It has speed up. It can remove enemy shield with a spiky wing too. So it, it actually doesn't even lack damage. Yeah, it's really cool. I agree with you. There it is. Turn one. Big damage coming in with the buzz buzz. Uh, onto the plant there. Um, he does lose one energy because of the Goda as well. I need to yeah, see Yeah, this Twisted. is interesting. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, different from last game, uh, Bulls is the one bringing the heat early. I think last time we saw Twisted firing on all cylinders. Um, here, we're seeing a more patient approach. I think that might be a little card draw related. He didn't really get a great card draw up front on his plant. Now the question is going to be, is he able to get value out of his tank? Meaning, does he draw two or three cards on it, which could survive uh, the mech attack and then get some... Uh, there we go. Now he's going to have to try to play those. He does. And I think that... Oh no, the spiky wing. Oh my... One of the most slept on cards in the game. Yeah, However, and then the Gota is probably going to finish him off right after, isn't it? But that's a single arc. It's going to finish it. Look at that. Oh, it's, no. it's gone. The shield's oh, all no. gone. He's oh, dead. No. He loses all the value. Oh, Double no. aquas. What's oh, going on? No. That's really, really That's bad so for Twisted. Bad. Ouch. Oh, and you know what? Man. I got to shout out a card right now. And that's Spiky Wing. One of the most slept on cards in the game. That was it, great. Yeah, it, it dismantles shields, right? It does twice the damage to shields. So even though he put up 130 and would normally survive there, the Spiky Wing made it not so. And now... Let's see if Twisted can be the one pulling off the magic. We are going to see here that the Aqua will speed up and it'll be followed by an insane mech combination, which is going to put he's dead. Twisted he's down dead. to a 1v2. He's yeah, he's, yeah, he's... he's well, <laughs> he's, I know the Aqua... he's, he's getting thrown into the next dimension, sir. <laughs> Ouch. So what's his, what's his chance here? It's double Cuckoo, right? Followed by... Yes has to be oh he's gonna go with the speed up first but i don't know i don't know about that i mean i guess the only positive here is that sequinox just played all of his energy this is doing no damage though i mean he needed to double cuckoo here and then follow i think he might round. be okay i mean he really? won't have enough energy you're right you're right he won't have enough energy to beat that mech later gotta be three cards here Dude, look yeah, how much shield this aqua has. yeah but it's a plus That's two good. attack yeah it's not enough it's not enough look how much shield it has i know it's sick and so sequinox is buying time very smart yeah. here and definitely has, doing he's got nothing left no and he's gonna get a second arco here probably yeah no it's not but it's a three card attack wait a second wait a second hold on a minute is that enough damage for this mech mm, now look but the no. problem is twisted has exhausted all of his energy I mean, if he gets two more cuckoos and rips off a 4x attack, no, he's dead already. He's already gone. dead. What are we talking about? Yeah, he's gone. already gone. This is double <laughs> furball on a mech into an aqua. He's done. Doesn't matter. Damn. GG's. Sequinox from the boys. The boys. 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 That guild Yo. is making noise. I tell you this, Elijah. When you when you have the game, when it's your W, you need to secure it, man. Cause the shit like this is gonna happen. Where like you draw, you don't draw on your plant. Then next turn you draw all cards on your plant. You unleash it. You die. You're like set back. And this is like an unfortunate game that he was supposed to lose. But game one was a game where Twist is supposed to win. Yeah. Right? Like you gotta get it done where you're supposed to get it done. No, you're absolutely right. You, you gotta be careful, guys, of outplaying yourself. I know it's happened to me. I've done it, but it, sometimes it's not as complicated as you think. And you're like, okay, I see the finish line time to execute. I feel like he got a little too patient. 
in that game. Yeah. But we would have made, probably made the same mistake because we were not in that position. But at the same time, we haven't been playing like double aquas as much, you know, as maybe Twisted has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. I mean, and at the same time, to, you know, take some of that heat off of him, he's facing a very tough comp. He's facing a very... Oh, yeah high throttle backliner that it's hard to know how much a, a damn peace treaty is going to do on a mech these days that's not something you're used to seeing and then bam he's getting slapped in the face 131 damage right that's uh that's that's not how that would have been before so i think he might have got a little thrown off there either way we've had some insane series uh happen some insane games happen in these early series of the best of eight are the uh Sorry, the beginning of this tournament with the eight players that we've had. We're going to be heading into the semifinals, and it's been highly entertaining. I'm enjoyed every minute of it so far. Yeah, we're going to have a break, guys, right now. Uh, we've been, this is nonstop action for like the past two hours or whatever. Uh, this I was fumbling my words. I'm like, ah, I can't talk straight because like there's been so much <laughs> high level thinking. <laughs> yeah, dude, this has been incredible. I I've loved it. I'm sure you guys at home have been enjoying this as well. So guys, we're going to be taking like a 10 minute break right now. Give all the players a little bit of a rest and we're going to come back here. Uh, we're going to get going with the top four. Uh, it's going to be some more amazing games. And before I go, I will say that spiky wing Teosha Aqua with the Koi in the middle has probably been the most creative axie we've seen so far. Yeah in the tournament and i love it and i want to see more of it but uh we've seen some a lot of really incredible teams and before we go once again if you guys want to donate you know the links are in chat available we got a ronin we got an address if you want to be able to uh we got the ethereum address we got um a tip link as well if you want to send money there it will all be forwarded to uh the relief funds and then you got anything else to say, Elijah, before we go to our break? No, I'm going to go eat some pizza and come back refreshed. All right, cool. So I'll we'll see you guys soon, all right? All right, see you in a bit. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, except for Elijah, he is not yet here. Uh, we'll be missing him for a little bit longer. Uh, but it's just gonna be me and chat. Okay, I hope you guys were also here for me too and not just for Elijah or the other players. Um, yeah, I mean, we got some really cool games up ahead. Our next series is gonna be... Let me take a quick look here. Do we have a bracket zero uh, that we can look at maybe? So the everybody at home can see what they may have missed or not. And don't worry guys, all these will be in VODs available for you guys to be able to watch. Even if you missed any of the games, we got some really sick gameplay that we've seen so far. Uh, honestly, personally, I feel like this is probably one of the best tournaments that I've got to witness in terms of you know the individual skill, the team building, the, the teams that the players brought, and um, like even the small little changes that they made. Like for example, we saw Thunder playing a hairbird with two aqua parts on it. Um, and there it is, the bracket uh, covering up my face here. So you guys will need to see that. Dissy Boy versus Snow was round one. Dissy Boy took the win 2-1. Uh, it was a really tough matchup. He, ha he had a Scaly Spoon against a mech and a bird, but that Scaly Spoon did work, especially in game one. Famine Rice versus Moonlight. 2-0 win. It was, uh, I would say it was a relatively clean victory over there. Then we have Terrasake versus Thunder, another nail biter. Terrasake, you know, he got that W at the end, even though he had a really awkward draw in game number three. Uh, it, it was literally a coin flip. Like, it, it couldn't have even been scripted better or something. Uh, like, that That was an incredible series. And then we got Sequinox twisted. Sequinox winning 2-0 with that Koi... Spiky Wing, Teal Shell Aqua in the middle. Not something that you generally see, but it worked out so well. So we're going to see Dissy Boy versus Spam now coming up next. Then we got Terrasake versus Sequinox on the bottom side. These are your top four. And then we'll be going to the finals. There will also be a third place decider. So we do Dissy Boy Spam. Then we'll have Terrasake versus Sequinox. Then the losers of those two series will be playing the third place match. And then we will be jumping into the finals. And I believe probably before the finals or before the third place match, we'll have like a really short break. And then we'll do a third place match and the finals back to back afterwards. All right. Um, let's take a look at chat real quick here. What you guys got? Uh, there's a guy in our guild. Oh, yeah, I saw that tweet. So... It seems that Kyle has a Piranha Teal Shell version. I might need to contact him and snatch that up to try it out. But to be fair though, personally speaking, I feel like there's a lot of holes with that Axie in the sense that there's not much energy gain. Um, or there's no there's no there's no energy gain at all. Uh I mean it, it's not really that relevant, but I feel like a team that can drain energy could be really tough for that Axie, but also poison teams, right? If I see spam and rice against that team like if he gets the chomp in the middle and then like tries to deal with that axie it could be a really big issue because you know poison obviously uh well we have yet to see how strong spiky wing is against that dusk but uh we'll see how it goes if he gets to that point i mean he will have to play against Terrasake, who does have um the backdoor mech so yeah don't need energy gain when mech does 1 million damage. True! That is my theory as well. Don't need energy gain when you got mechs. I mean, it's not only the Furball Twin Tail mech too, right guys? The Hair Hero mech is also disgustingly strong um, and doesn't need that much energy as well. As long as you get the hairs off the previous turn with the heroes, you're literally going to just redraw all the cards if your last Axie alive. Is this a TI7 jacket? It is! It is! Hold on, let me let me flex this real quick. Ah, pick it up. Can you guys see that? Easy clap. That's because I played in TI7. Alright, I'm ready. Alright. I'm, I'm back, bro. I'm ready for this final stretch. What an insane tournament it has been. And thanks for your Welcome patience, back. guys. For me, 
if I don't eat, I can't function properly. So, you know, it's like playing. If I'm playing on an empty stomach, I'm going to make all kinds of mistakes. So if I'm oh, Wait, so you're not a robot? I, I thought all this time you were not human. And I guess you are. No, you're, you're thinking of Indes. Okay, that's fair. But we also learned that he got sick recently. So maybe he's also, maybe he also bleeds. We, we don't know. That is yeah, the... well, he was sick and he won the most recent tournament, so doesn't really matter. <laughs> he just had a small malfunction, that's it. But it, it, it wasn't enough to hold him back. Yeah, exactly. That's right. So I was hearing you talk about the bracket and mm -hmm. what we have in store. It is an exciting stretch here toward the finish line. Who do we have up first is what I'm We got Dissy Boy versus Spam up first. Let's ask Zero here. We're gonna connect with him. Zero, uh, are, are our players ready? Are they prepared to jump into the game? We're waiting for the delay. Okay, so we are underway. Maybe we can jump into the game and see what lineups they're playing because I'm hyped to see if there's anything different going on here. But what I've noticed, Elijah, is these players, although they were able to bring six axes, they're not really changing up their teams. They're, they, it feels like they're sticking to what they believe is the strongest team that they can muster up instead. It does feel like that. I think players, they have a lot of confidence in their comfort teams. And if they're playing close games, like they lose a close one in round one, they're not necessarily that eager to switch over. They're kind of thinking, hey, you know, maybe I could have won that, right? They've won a lot of games with their comfort team, so they don't necessarily need to pull the switch. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense for sure. I think you have a lot more experience than I do in this uh, Axie Infinity tournament environment as well. So I, you know, we all love to hear your insight on that. Um, also, as a tournament champion, not everybody can say that. You know, it, winning an Axie tournament is freaking hard. I'll tell you that much. It's like too much X factors going on here and there, and then like you need to play perfectly as well. One or two things also needs to go your way. It's tough, man. It's tough. I believe we lost him for a second again. Okay, he's back. I'm back. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm back. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Did you catch that? that? It's extremely. It's extremely difficult to win mm. uh, tournaments because there's a lot of variance. But you know what? You come from a background that is used to having to tough it out as well in the esports scene. I come from a poker background myself, and this is what we have to do. We have to be tough and, and look at the long run and think the big picture, not just one tournament, but many tournaments. Exactly. Here we go. This is the matchup that I was looking forward to. Amazing. We got the, uh, we got the mosquito in the back versus the scaly spoon in the middle and the shrimp in the mid for spam as well. Dissy boy he's going to face the same problem, which is getting through that front axie. He needs to kill that frontliner. I don't expect any toothless plays coming from Dissy Boy in this game. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, that's just going to be the way it needs to go down for him to get this done. I don't have a clue how that 1v1 works out between that midliner <laughs> and the backline plant. There's going to be a lot of back and forth. I am believing that I guess it looks like spam has the advantage. Mm. Well, sp well some, think... a chat saying that they need to backdoor because you can't use Scaly Spoon if you get Kestrel, which is super true. And the Gravel is, is not going to stop the Kestrel. Yeah, mm. no, you're right. Actually, the more I think about it, it's kind of pretty obvious. I think spam has a big advantage in that 1v1. The more I break it down. Huh, yeah, the yeah. Scaly Spoon is going to reflect the Kestrel for some damage, but how much damage really? I mean, at the end of the day, Two Kestrels into two Scaly Spoons. Ah, you know what? That's going to remove any shield. Then the Scaly Spoons are going to do damage on top of it. And then you throw Gravels in there. Ah. It really comes down to who comes out ahead, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, Spam, if he, he, like, he doesn't have energy gain where Dissy Boy does. So he's yeah. normally going to have more energy in this game. And when Dissy Boy gets the Gravelant out, I mean, they, they need to keep trading the Gravelant. They can never let that drop, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It so... Yeah, no, you're I absolutely think you're right. right. I you're think you're right, right too, and, like and, with the scaly spoons. Yeah, it comes down to in these mashups, like how well you can prepare yourself to have this much of an advantage in the 1v1 in double plant uh, mirror matchups, right? This is a unique situation because normally they're a little more identical. Spam and Rice has a bit of a novelty plant there in Mosquito and Kestrel. 
But I think the principle remains that if you get there with one or two extra cards than your opponent or one or two extra energy than your opponent, you're going to be in good shape. You're going to be able to outmaneuver them in most scenarios. So who can do that better? It's going to be close. It's a great question. I will say Dissy Boy has energy gain up front on his plant. Spam and Rice has more damage. I am super interested to see how this goes and to see if Dissy Boy, what he prioritizes as the threat. I actually think life is more difficult for him 1v1ing that plant than that Aqua, for sure. So if I was him, and now that I think about it more, and I was able to get that backdoor draw in with the eggshell transfer follow-up to ensure the kill, I would probably I don't think he can go do it. for it. Yeah. I don't think he can do it. Look at the damage output he has. Scaly Spoon, Bone Sail, and then... <laughs> the spam's backliner attacks first as well like if spam if dizzy boy doesn't play cards for like the first three turns and spam hasn't already killed that bird like the spam's just gonna play one mosquito and then you're like well <laughs> you know I, I don't know what you do after that it's gonna be tough for him i think I, he's gonna need to play almost perfectly I, I actually don't think it's even possible to get like a kill with the back door well, like it is possible. It is possible. Anything's possible in Axie. He could draw True. a perfect draw. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking transfer. closer to like less than 5% probability. That, like that's what I mean. Like I guess. Impossible. Well, and Sorry, a big part of that is he doesn't have, like you said, he has almost no follow-up damage. So you're exactly. making a great point there. And the thing about that too is can he even get the, you know, can he even get the damage that he needs with the Godas slowing him down on the energy gain? It is another problem for him. He does have the leaf bug. We'll see. Good start for him as far as if he does want to go back door. He already has sneaky raid, hair, and egg. Yeah. So we'll have to see. It's tragic having to throw scaly spoons and zigzags into finishing or attempting to finish off a backline axie. That's not I'll make how you one more point. Cards. I'll make one more case. Go ahead. It's not possible to. I'm listening. I just took it from 5% to 1%. What if he Ouch. plays one Bidens? Well, what if he plays one Bidens? If he plays one Bidens, he removes he... the aroma. Rip. You're right. Tragic. That plant's not dying. If he just plays... It's either one Bidens or one Mosquito, right? Either way. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. You're right. I, um... Even though you said it to me earlier, it kind of went over my head that he has the Mosquito before the other two plants. But now that you, like... Now that that has registered for me... That plus the Bidens, it's a one percenter. Oh gosh, okay, here we go though. For it. But he didn't play anything. Wait, here it is. It's happening. The one percent. He has four cards. It's happening. It's happening. It happened. Bro, he's a dead plant. <laughs> oh man. It, didn't it was play like an, we just broke down why it was so. He went with the leaf bug bone sale. Doesn't even want the energy. He's like, I just have to try to kill this thing in round two, and he actually gets it done. That's absolutely insane. We went through why it was a one percent chance, and that one percent happened. Welcome to Axie Infinity, folks. Theban's gone. He's gone. <laughs> what? That was crazy. Now, look, no one get ahead of themselves. Can can he close it out? One other thing we know about Axie is the game isn't over until it's over. Theban's in the loss for words over here. This is hilarious. Dude, that was really the perfect hand for him, game, round two. You know? What did I'm I sure. say? I said it was going to happen. I said he was going to backdoor the plant. He backdoored the plant. I called it. Crit. I like it. That's a five-card combo. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw it, bro. I looked into the future, and I said that plant's going to die in round two, and it did. <laughs> I meditate warped into the future and I saw it. But yes. right. wait a minute, Theban, where are we here? Okay. It's like mm -hmm. they both have equal energy and they both have two axes. The problem is who has the better two axes. Now, I think if you're okay, hold on. Let's take a pause. Let's take a let's take a breath here because that was an overwhelming couple of rounds. I just don't see. I mean, how do you cope with this massive green plant? sitting in front of you that has heal ups and damage reflect and gravelant mm -hmm. you know even if spam backdoors the bird he can backdoor the bird he should that? not 
I think he should not back door to bird. No, I was, I agree. I think the plant is the threat. That's what I was yeah. going to say. I was going to yeah. say he needs to abandon that idea and try to deal with this plant somehow. Now, we can see that Dissy Boy is actually going for the kill right here, right now on that plant. The Goda is going to miss the tank. Not that it would have done too much damage anyway, mm -hmm. but he does destroy. I don't know if he burned an energy or not. No, he but... did not. It, okay, he, but this... Uh... Yeah, Dizzy Boy yeah. even played a Toothless at the end there to make sure that... Bro, bro, he's swinging heavily right now with the two heroes and the two Aqua cards, but it's going to the bird. He is going to draw some cards, and it's going to be this Aqua versus this plant, which is, I think, exactly what Dizzy Boy Hang wanted on. to get Look to. Look how much shield game. he has, though, on that plant. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It ain't over yet. Like, he, the spam had four energy available, and he gets this big, big clip. And next turn, spam's gonna be able to store up energy and play a four clip on with the Aqua, right? Spam is gonna pass, and this yeah. did absolutely nothing for Dissy Boy, except it kept him alive. And now we see here, now I do not know if this is gonna... Is this what the hell is gonna happen? It's gonna be close, because there'll be four damage, but look how much health this plant has. He's gonna have a ton of shield. He's gonna go with the zigzag double scaly, I guess. Oh yeah, okay. my goodness! He's not worrying about gravel. The damage reflect is gonna be huge here. Two scalies, but two orandas are gonna hit him back in the face. But this He's is dead. gonna be too much damage. He already got him. Spam got him. Holy shit! He got him. It's over. That's it. That's it. The crit, not enough. Wow. Where's the chat? What the hell does the chat have to say about that? Because that was an absolutely insane game. If you're a spam fan, uh, now's your time to shine in the chat because he just pulled off an insane comeback. We talked about how difficult it was going to be for that backline plant to die to a backdoor attack. Lo and behold, round two, the plant drops. Spam fights back, gets the amazing draw toward the end with four cards on the plant up front. The damage goes in big time, and it's enough for the Aqua to follow up and kill Dizzy Boy's midline plant. That's crazy. That was actually insane. I mean, I think Hero had a, such a big play there. The shrimp with the Hero, right? Because he was able to draw those cards on the bird for when he hit the bird, which allowed him to get to those four cards on the plant, which then allowed him to live yeah. <clears throat> and buy enough time and do so much damage to the plant. Like, the whole problem for Dissy Boy is getting to that first plant. Like, it's so annoying. He, he just couldn't do it. Even he killed a back plant. This front damage plant is a god. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I think that the back plant was a bigger nightmare oh, for him. Oh, it was, 100%. When, yeah, when he saw yeah. that back door, he's like, oh, yeah, round two, I'm going for yeah. this. Like, I have to try. It worked. I think you're correct about the hero and the card draw because it was like out of nowhere, this front plant had an entire clip. And I'm like, wait a minute. How does he have two beaches and two sandals here? And it was because of the hero card draw getting a full yeah. hand once again. Now, Theban, do we not sack the bird there? Because when initially when I saw him coming in with the aqua, it, it was two aqua cars, two heroes into the plant. I was thinking, oh, this isn't really going to be an effective round. Turns out it goes toward the bird, get the kill, and two cards. I think that might have been a perfectly timed attack by Spam. I think he read the egg and played it exactly how he needed to play it there. Because he's not going to throw those cards into a plant for no reason. He was reading into the future. He saw the egg. He made the outplay in my mind. I agree. That 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 is so true. He probably was very cool about it. Like it's like he knew this is pretty much the only way he's gonna get that. And that plant in the front also lived with like what seven HP or something ridiculous. Like yeah something silly it had like 8 hp when it threw up those 200 the 200 shield from those cards the double beach double sandal it was enough to survive enough to get all the damage off enough to buy time what an absolutely insane game D no dizzy boy no what's he doing no oh man you disgusting disgusting player busting Desperate. out the anemones Desperate times call for desperate measures, and when you're playing against Spam and Rice, maybe you have to break out the cheese, and that is what Dissy Boy is trying to do here. Double an enemy bird. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> Did not expect to see this one. They have I mean, Cottontail, too, instead of Nemo, so they get actually uh, shield. They're harder to kill. I think this is a good matchup, though, for Dissy Boy. I think it's an incredible matchup for him, and I think it's a heads-up play that he brought something so polarizing to the table. I hate yeah. this build. 
I think it's garbage. I think it's cheesy. But you know what? He's making a heads up play by having it in his back pocket. And this is like honestly one of the best times to break it out because I think yeah. He's got the speed advantage. Can backdoor the mech before the mech back backdoors the bird, and that's very hard for spam with a low damage mid and frontliner to get rid of these aquas. And mm-hmm. he's got the energy control to to uh, grab the speed and pace of this game and make sure that the mech doesn't get too fast on him with the backdoor attack. I think the winghorn is completely useless in this matchup, right? Like it's really not going to do anything. Completely useless. You're right. Yeah. I think actually, so Spam's mech team is incredibly good in the top 100 because every other team beats Anemones. Yeah. Right? But Anemones kind of beat this team. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oddly enough, they they do, and that's that's the funny part. Like you said, is in the top 100, right? When you're top 50, top 100, you don't have to worry about Anemones anymore because, like, yeah. you, like you mentioned, they're going to run into a lot of problems versus the higher level meta, like but, double plants. Like double plants, exactly. But in this situation, Dissy Boy making a stone read here and busting this out. Now, we'll have to see if he gets the proper RNG or and proper execution. But on paper, it's looking pretty good for him. It is. It is. But I think Spam still has potential to outplay, obviously. Um, I, well, I, I say outplay, but more like drawing all your mech cards, <laughs> you know? Draw your mech cards, go pop that <laughs> backliner, and then the game looks pretty good for you. Um, but yeah, what 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 an outplay, right? What an Pop outplay! You mind read the RNG? <laughs> Dude, listen, I've been I've been playing the backdoor team because I'm like I need to understand it better, obviously, right? Like in Axie Infinity, it's all about like you said before, you know, your uh, muscle memory, right? Muscle memory yeah. comes from experience and knowledge and like practice so i was playing a backdoor team and i'm playing and i play against the other backdoor teams and it's all like who gets to draw round two who gets to yeah. draw round one it's so dumb it, yeah. like you can literally never be rank one playing a backdoor team because eventually you're gonna lose a game you're gonna lose like 27 points you know it's like it, it doesn't matter you're just leaving it up to luck at the end of the day yeah but here's one of the hardest things about axie infinity is like look i've been around long enough I've tried to build the indestructible teams where I can have all my bases covered and I can make Mm. sure that I always get to outplay somebody, right? Guess what? It doesn't exist. No matter what, even if you try to build like the perfect durable team where you're like, okay, well, they can't backdoor me. They can't backdoor my midliner. They can't do this and that. There's going to be a a weakness in the armor. Mm. So you just have to do the best that you can with what you've got and try to get as close to perfect balance as possible. But other than that, like, there's always going to be really brutal Ooh. matchups for you. Is that oh a bye-bye mech God. round two? That's- I think that's a bye-bye mech here. Moment of silence for this mech that will see no action in this game. Can we game. see some Fs in chat? The mech <laughs> has zero cards, okay? The bird has four. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fs in oh chat, please. <laughs> They're delivering. They're delivering the Fs. They know Listen, what's up. No love lost for that mech, I think, from chat. No, like, they, 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 they're not going to shed a tear, though. I'll Bro, tell you that much. Let's be honest. Everyone's rejoicing a little right now, <laughs> seeing the mech go down. Whoever, whoever go. said H22, hats off for that comment. God mech, because the mech is about to meet God himself. Damn. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh. All right, let's see how Spam is going to clutch this one out. Now, we will say, though, that there it is a reptile and a plant body type versus two aquas and a bird. And he's got a decent amount of energy. It's a matter of whether can he find that value from his energy before the Godas come out. Man, it's looking really bad. How is he going to kill these aquas? Listen, I, I see that you have not been in the casting industry long enough because, you know, number one rule is you always got to be optimistic regardless of the situation the opponent is in. Yeah, you, you're, you're right. You're right. And you know what? We've been wrong a couple times. We have called been. it in some earlier matches. Like A oh, lot more is... than we like. I'll no, tell you're you that right. Much. You're right. You're right. We've said it before. Like, oh, this is a pretty insane uphill battle. Lo and behold, the guy loses. I that was think last the game, first right? Series that was that was last game too with spam. Yeah, it was. It was. And spam mm. looked like he was 
Let's see. If anyone can pull it off, it's going to be spam. He's a, look. He's saving up tons of cards. Big clip coming. Oh, oh he goes God. to the perfect axie too. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's passing. He's passing. And he, he went to the bottom axie. That's exactly what he needed. Oh, my God. Why does it feel like the pressure is getting to Dissy Boy? He's going to sacrifice the bird, but what is it? No, he's transferring it... the buff. He's transferring the buff. No, he's transferring the buff. Okay. His the Aqua's going to his... heal. Okay. Only once, though, right? Oh, no. He'll heal twice. Oh, back to full HP mm -hmm. and spams completely out of energy here and his yeah. shields you know is getting no value on the bone sale uh yeah yeah it's but this boy doesn't have much resources on that top aqua that's the one that has used almost everything he's got two heals left he's got two heals and he's getting two no eggs here as well which is a big deal and he's got three in the chamber as far as energy and i don't even know if okay, once he heals yeah. up here that that I dusk is gonna spam. kill him yeah that is no. not gonna die. No. He'll, he'll, gonna... he'll stun. Yeah. He'll stun him and, and he'll be low HP. The question is, does he try a whoa whoa wait wait a minute? Does he go for a winghorn? I think no. He goes for a single bone sale. That's a dead dusk. That's a dead dusk. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. It's a wrap. Yeah, GG. GG. Nice game two over here. I feel like this is a situation where spam's like, yo, I gotta bring out the plans. Like I don't got a shot in the world if I play this mech team into that. Anemones again. Yeah, yeah, true. But question: Do we get a hard read the other way now? Does Dissy Boy say, "Okay, break the break, break out the plants. I'll break out the God Team. I'll kill your bird, and then I'll have a, a mech that does insane damage and kills both of your plants later on, and a well, dust that you have to get through." Was it spam favored though with this other team? No, it was the he, he had the shrimp with the plant, right? Oh, he did have a shrimp. He did have a shrimp. Yeah, yeah. He did I have see a what bird. you're saying. Breaking out the plants with the one in front back. After some, I'm so used to seeing double plant bird that I was thinking that's uh, what you were talking about. Even in that case, though, he'd be in good shape, though, because the, the, the birds have the faster back door. Yeah, that's a close matchup. So maybe what do you think, then? Do you think that he tries to go with the anemone again? I mean, how bad of a situation is that for him against... Let's say he does it. He goes with the anemone. I think it's fair though because he this would actually give him a better chance. To be yeah, honest, I agree. I agree. I think Spam was cleaning house with this team against uh, everything, didn't he? I don't think he's lost with this team yet. Um, he, I believe he did lose one game to Snow, if I recall correctly. He, he didn't play Snow. He did. He uh, sorry, not Snow. Uh, Moonlight. No, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't lose. You're right. He didn't lose. Yeah, I was thinking about Dizzy Boy playing Snow. That was the game yeah. where he lost. Yeah, but yeah, he, yeah. Spam he didn't lose. So is, Spam is up. Uh, so is it one one right now? It's one one right now. Okay. Game three. I'm so happy we get to experience this. Like we just get to chill and watch some amazing Axie Infinity games with eight to nine hundred right now. Incredible people supporting the channel, supporting the cause here to raise awareness, here to have fun and try to lift our spirits right now in, in a, a difficult time for our Filipino brothers and sisters. So yeah, thanks for being here. It's been a hell of a tournament so far and we got a lot of action left to go. So also this... I will mention, uh, Elijah, this is the best of five, by the way. I know, I know what okay. I'm in for. All right, all right. I know what I signed up for. Nice. Yeah. So the thing about this a uh, plant versus the anemone is that he can actually disable the ranged heal too. Boom. That's true. That definitely hurts the options because you disable the ranged heal, you disable the melee. All you got is and cotton tails, right? After that. You're right. You're right. But the question is, yeah, it's just going to be, man, it's going to be tricky. Honestly, it's probably not even that bad. I feel like this anemone should be okay with the Goda and cotton tails. I don't know. It's it's tough. It's tough. He can only put up like a um, uh, hundred and ten shield, and the Kestro kind of just rips through that, right? No, you can put up one if you have all four. You can put up a hundred. Yeah, but then shield. now you you want to be able to redraw those cards every turn. Like you want to be able to redraw your double Godas every turn at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Again, it's going to be a situation of like, when do they get down to the wire with? Like, what are their resources looking like at that point, right? Mm -hmm. If spam doesn't have enough to keep cycling through those combinations, then the anemone will come out on top, especially with the energy destroy. So it could be close. I think that also with spam. His, his damage output isn't phenomenal. I know Kestrel's pretty good, but how good is it on a plant? Eh, you know, not good, not great. Mosquito as well, it's a bug card. It's not going to do 
too much damage on an aqua maybe like maybe what like 70 when a plant is attacking with it 69 maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right something like that um 60 i think it should be like 66 into an aqua yeah i mean that's not that great or, oh okay okay so we'll see <laughs> everyone's like 69 yep that's it that's the number <laughs> why why did i say that <laughs> 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 That's the number. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. I guess in this situation, this is where like the god plant, like the Goda Sando guy, like he's a little bit less valuable because of the anemones. Right? The cause you got like two, you know, um you have like two bug damage cards. But at the same time though, like it feels so good draining the energy of you know the Nemos or or the cottontails, if ever they use that yeah no that's true that's true that is good i think i don't know would you have put your plant on the high road here so that both plants well let's let's see what happens in the action let's see how this yeah. goes down because it's so difficult when you play plant cards and it splits off like to the bottom exactly. aqua. i agree so i agree you can't really even do that until you kill yeah no that's true that's true that is good i think i don't know would you have put your plant on the high road here so that both plants well let's let's see what happens in the action let's see how this yeah. goes down because it's so difficult when you play plant cards and it splits off like to the bottom exactly. aqua. i agree so i agree you can't really even do that until you kill the top one but mm -hmm. now you're having to hold back so much to wait for that moment and in the meantime yeah. you're losing energy to go to it's really rough i would probably put the shrimp in the middle and the two plants in the same line so you can play like kestrel and beach or something into i was thinking the, the same enemies. thing if you can yeah. get a kill there with the kestrel the beaches then that's fantastic and then you have your other aqua to start really doing work on the second aqua or going back door mm -hmm. options available and the uh, hero yeah. in this matchup is so good oh you're 100 percent right about that you're 100 percent about that and he does have cattail too up front so i think he mm -hmm. could you know be pretty good as far as options go as long as he times those get some value out of them there we ah. go. turn two we see a little bit of damage coming out one to get rid of that plant right now no cattails for spam in two turns yeah that's a bit unfortunate because he would have had a few cards here yeah, he even played a, a casual plant? hero. Yeah, that's the dead plant. He won, he, he, plant. he played the hero to try and get to it. He loses three cards. Goda, Beach, Sandal, all gone. Oh, that's plant. bad news for Spam. I mean, now he's down to a 2v3 situation. I, I think he's going to he's gonna be able to burst this one up top probably. Wait a second, though. Which one is that? Is that the one that is, I guess, one's darker than the other? The fuzzy, okay. fuzzy. The fuzzy one has no fuzzy. cards, but if he draws big here... Maybe like another Cottontail, two anemones. He can brick wall against that Aqua, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. If the Aqua chooses to go through through this Aqua, I don't know. He might backdoor the bird. Be interesting to see what he decides to do. It'd be interesting to see what both players opt to do here. We'll definitely see the Cottontail because that's just free energy if he manages to get that off. Two Cottontails, front. okay. He'll get the energy. Will Three he cards kill? through the front and what? A mosquito? 64? This is just yeah, it's really dead. It's it's dead. It is, but man, that was risky. Yeah, it's like Dude. it was like one card away from surviving and healing. Bro, right that was up. so risky because the plant goes last, mm -hmm. and the draw gets split now. What the? What is happening? Yeah, right. He sure probably just played a Kestrel there, but he's really saving his resources. He feels spam must feel like he's really far behind, right? I think he feels. I think I don't want to say spam's panicking because. He's a great player, but I think that was a bit of a like, oh god, I'm, I, I gotta make something happen. And luckily, it worked out for him. Now, that's a dead aqua. That's a dead aqua. Ooh, and he tanks the Graveland here. This Dissy boy making a play, making a big play, diverting the plant into the bird, which now allows for this aqua to... He's gonna play it slow. He's gonna use... Mm -hmm. And he's got two hairs and an egg next turn, too. But I feel like Spam's going to get a read on this. That dude, the egg is coming out. Dude, Dissy Boy is playing this really, really well. It's going to be close, but like he's playing this really, really well. Because now oh, what? That's now dead. He's that's all, dead. All that is too that's much dead. damage. Dissy Boy is going to upset Spam and Rice. Two Holy. One. one game away. Dissy Boy is one. Bro, Anemones, 
please, Dizzy Boy, I'm I'm about to disqualify you right now. You 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 play Anemone again and you win this. I, I don't know, man. We're gonna have oh. to go to the back and have a conversation. My bad. I said he was gonna upset him because I forgot for a second that it's a best of five. Spam is still yeah. in it. Spam is still yeah. in it. All the spam fans out there, don't panic. Okay, the guy is a is a beast. So we'll have to see. But this could very very easily go into a game five. This e boy breaking out the cheese. He's breaking out the Gouda, the Swiss cheese, the American cheese. He's breaking out all the different cheddars to take this guy out, and it's working. So. Where are we at now? I mean, the thing about that game, I don't know. It was just a dismantled, like, he just took him apart piece by piece. It's a best of five spam. Really well. get, get, get back in there. What are you doing? Get spam, back into get the game. Get, get out back of here, in man. there. Go, go focus, bro. You... <laughs> this guy's in here like, wait, it was a best of five? Yeah, it's a best of five. Yeah. <laughs> go. Go play the game. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in chat? <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, these anemones, this is a monstrosity. Like it works so well, like against the the teams that the people have brought in the tournament so far. I think the yeah. double aquas would have done well. I didn't see any scarabs from any of the players either. So you you have that. Like the thing about anemone is always a goddamn coin flip team. Like it's just stupid. Like for that reason. Oh, it's extremely annoying to play against. I think you're lucky if you get into the top 100 because, like we said, it disappears and you don't have to, like, rack your brain against it uh, anymore at that point. But on the way up, you know, if you're trying to go from top 1,000 to top 100, it's uh, you got to walk through some minefields. Between that and there's a lot of poison in that range too, a lot of double poison in that range. Um, that lessens a little bit at the very, very top as well in terms of metas. But... Um, we're seeing it in action here, and we're seeing how difficult it is. The control, the godas, the backdoor threat, healing. There's so much that you have to account for. Uh, there's just no easy way around it. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Game number four. This e boy, the man, is up 2-1 on Spam and Rice. Spam and Rice going for the little owl bird. Ooh. Dude, Spam is so okay. smart. He okay. put this. He put this in as one of his six axes. I love it. I've heard him talk about this before, and he makes such a great point. He's talk. He, he's one who thinks on that level of like, all right, well, like let the whole meta do this. Let them start playing this. I'll just break out my pure post fight bird. I've literally heard him say those words. So what he's trying to do here is beat Dissy Boy to the punch with the back door. Obviously, sixty one speed bird doesn't get faster than that. And he's got the zero cost to make it even easier to pull off this backdoor. Now, the thing is, what does Dissy Boy have? He's got Godas, two of them. So if he can slow him down enough and buy time to get his backdoor off first, then it's game over. We've seen what that looks like with the Dusk and Plant trying to beat this team, and it was not pretty. I completely agree, sir. I just want to say... Um... This is going to be a really uh, interesting game, for sure. This <laughs> is going to be a very interesting game. Who's going to draw the key clutch cards first? That's what it's going to be coming down to. Do you think you ever just go with a toothless play, even though you don't get the kill on the bird? Like, um, just to bring it low enough? Yeah, it's definitely something worth considering. Um, it can be one of those, like... It can be a very clutch play, especially if you're talking about a round three situation where you haven't seen him play any cards yet and he's going to be wanting to feel like, you know, maybe he needs to get his post fight value or something uh, before the the Aqua dies. And then you just mm. rip off your combo, hope, hope he doesn't have the proper backdoor combination. It's worth considering, I mean, to remove those two cards as well, doing it earlier. But the problem is, I feel like... Can these anemones get through this plant and this dusk while having that bird there as a threat as well and pull off the win? I don't know. It seems kind of unlikely. I think you kind of have to secure the kill in this situation. Hmm. I guess we'll just have to see. Uh, what What was his other options that he had? He has the mech, he has the plant, and he had the shrimp. Right. Hmm. I wonder if there was ever a situation where you just play like shrimp bird for spam against his anemones. 
just <laughs> interesting just to go with as much aqua and bird damage as possible because we know that it's good against other aquas yeah why not right and two ways to kill the bird as well and uh secure your you know pretty much the heroes as well you get extra card draw like I, i'm not entirely sure how good this winghorn bone cell grass snake axi is like against these guys i don't think it's great it's actually mm -hmm. yeah i think and I think one more right. point, Elijah. Why why did he put the bone tail guy in the middle? Do you have an idea of why he might have done that? Does that swing to the bird? Wait a second. It does, doesn't it? Because isn't the equal. second axe? Oh, because they're both axes are up front, so they're that must swing to the bird. Equally close to him, so it goes to the bird. Genius. I think, which is if that's very the case. Smart. That's absolutely genius. So, Theban, to, he did what you were just thinking about, kind of. Like, you were like, why don't you put a shrimp in the middle and have double backdoor threat? Well, now he kind of does with his dusk. Yeah. Maybe the shrimp still would have been better because of the damage, but I don't know. That dusk is going to be super beefy later on and hard to mm -hmm. kill, so it's not the worst. Okay, we're in round two. Not a lot of action yet. And unfortunately for dissy boy not really oh getting, uh... he got the combo first oh my god is dissy boy just gonna three one this game now oh my god i looked away for one second i was just about to say unfortunately for dissy boy he doesn't have a lot of uh godas to slow him down and then before i could even finish it before i could finish that sentence Spam and Rice's bird was dead. Oh man. This is not looking good for a spam fan out there. How many times has Dizzy Boy just got round two backdoor? Uh pfft. I think that's back to back, isn't it? Isn't that just back to back to back? It might be. So we're seeing here four card combo. But if it goes top, okay, it goes oh, bottom. I think it goes that's bottom. Enough, right? That's good. That's, yeah, that's very enough. good. That's, that's a dead. That's a dead aqua. No, it's not. no, it's not. Oh <laughs> my! And it's faster than all the axes. Oh, that's an F. Oh no! And he I just think first... Spam's like, get me the fuck out of this game, bro. Yeah, <laughs> get that me out, hurts, bro. Three HP. Damn. 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 Yeah, that's an F for sure. Wow. <laughs> Chat's going crazy with the apps. <laughs> oh man, you hate to you hate to see, uh, you hate to see the double and enemies birds like ever come out on top. But you also have to give credit where credit's due to Dizzy Boy. Like I said, putting putting this in there as an X factor, um, something he can fall back on. And it turned out to be br brilliant here in this situation. He also had the Axie Gods on his side a little bit with that second uh, round back door once again. And we'll, we'll have to see. Is there any magic left here? I mean, is there magic? If, again, there's three energy incoming here for spam. He's got a full HP Dusk. Dizzy Boy looks a little depleted, but then again, he's got heals potentially. Ouch. I mean, he's got cotton tails. Eventually, he's gonna have too much. Steven, what happened to that optimism? You're, you're uh, <laughs> listen, that optimism went out the window when I saw three games in a row where Dizzy Boy just backdoored and killed on round two. Uh, <laughs> I, I, this this looks like my friggin' arena games, bro. I play arena, I get backdoored round two every game. Oh. Yeah, this is like those bad days on Arena where you're just like, are you kidding me? Are you joking right now? Every game, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure everybody in chat as well also gets backdoored round two every game. We all yeah. get backdoored round two. That's why we're stuck where we are because we get backdoored round two. I haven't drawn a round two backdoor shrimp combination since 1999. I never draw my combos. Yep. But you always get comboed. Right. I always get comboed. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Uh, all the Godas just putting him down to zero anyway. Like he's dead a, bird? Oh, that is a dead bird though. Dead bird alert? No. Nope. Not, not, never mind. <laughs> what am I talking about? Where's the, the hard. Where's the in the chat? 
I mean, he's dead to a winghorn. I know, but like, come on, man. Like, nothing. You can't kill a single Axie this game. Oh, man. Ouch. Ouch. Can somebody uh, pull the plug here? Someone, yeah, just someone gets spammed to say he disconnected. Yeah. Uh, well, he's not oh, giving up. Oh, and he up. gets his last energy burned. He sure does. Ouch. It's okay. He's a warrior. There's... Spam's a warrior. He'll he'll he... figure something clearly, out. Clearly, he is a warrior. Oh, and then for the better editor. or for worse. Someone said, hey, best of seven, or Spam said, hey, best of seven, right? <laughs> yeah, Spam, we'll keep bumping it up until you actually win this series. Oh, man, that's that's unfortunate for him. Pretty funny. Uh, pretty uh, funny might not be the right word, but... This team comp can do damage and also... Sometimes it does just come down to... I feel bad for Spam because, like, he read the situation so well. He put that door pure bird in his arsenal. He was ready for a situation like this. And it's just... It still did not matter with the... Uh, the fact that Dizzy Boy got one the round two draw. He got a crit there, which kind of put him on a... More of a timer, I guess. This is this, this is more painful to watch than two plants healing each other. Up. Yeah, it is. And wow, he played the single single an enemy. Rip. He knows that with 80, 80, less than eighty health, it's all over here, <sighs> and that's it. Dizzy boy takes down spam and rice. A, a big, M, what? You can't help but call it a big upset because Spam and Rice has been on such a hot roll this season and Dissy Boy has not been as big of a name as Spam. So for him to come in here and perform like that and get the job done, it's impressive. You know, hats okay. off to him. YGG as well, making noise in this tournament. I think that's kind of a serendipitous, like, fair play here because they're 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 doing big things in PH yeah. right now. The karma's Listen, on their side. Dissy Boy, like, did the smartest move out of everybody, right? He brought a team that was kind of unexpected that others are not prepared for and was actually a very solid counter to some of these meta teams. Yeah, it was. It is. Right? Like, he yeah. couldn't play the mech anymore because of that team. Spam couldn't play the mech anymore. And, like, it's a team that has, you know, a good win percentage against majority of the stuff out there. So it kind of works. It's just not as good in arena because you can't control who you play against or what you play against. So in the sixth taxi tournament, it worked out well. Um, and I think he deserves to go straight into the finals because of that. And that's it. That We got our first finalist, guys. Uh, it's going to be Dissy Boy. And we're going to be looking at who's going to be joining him. Is it going to be Tersake from Meditate or Sequinox from Bulls? Dot GG. Yeah, super excited for this next series. I'm still processing what I just watched because, like you said, I think what Dissy Boy did, uh, you nailed it, right? Like, none of these top, top players out here playing the highest meta builds are thinking anyone's going to bring double an enemy into the mix here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they're not really considering that as, a, as an option. And there is just this small, like, window of opportunity cracking the armor from playing a team like that that exposes some of the backdoor highest meta builds such as the mechs yeah and yeah. uh we just saw that perfectly right there um and again spam went with the counter to the counter he brought out the speedy bird and fortune was not on his side it was not three games in a row round two backdoored but it can't take anything away from Dissy Boy, though. I'll tell you that much. Like, yeah, he, I think he. What guys? One thing you need to understand about games like this, card games especially, like even poker or you know anything that has some probability involved, you always need to put yourself in a position to succeed. Yeah, that's it, and everything else will take care of itself eventually. Yeah, right. 
Oh, I couldn't agree more. Game. It's like that with poker tournaments. Like I played professionally for two years, and at the end of the day, all your your real objective was like, can I get to the final two tables with really any amount of chips? If you have a huge stack, that's great. But if you, as long as you're still alive at that point, then you know you can make the proper all-in plays. It's like there's not that much thinking to that at that point. But you need to play really well in the early and mid stages to get there. Axie tournaments is the same. You're just trying to get into that like last stretch, four players, and then hope for some good RNG. And if you do it enough times and you practice in between and train hard, like I said earlier, you're gonna bank a tournament at some point and feel on top of the world. Completely agreed. And. Uh... Let's talk to Zero for a second here. Do we got our players ready? Have they started? About to start. Okay, so they're about to get in there. Maybe they needed a, a second to digest that previous series as well themselves. Uh, or maybe they thought that was going to take a lot longer than they expected because of the anemones. Who do you think is uh, favored in this next series? I mean, we saw... Sequinox playing the Koi Aqua in the middle and Terrasake playing the mech with the Poison uh, Winghorner in the middle. Um, how you feel? Um, I kind of need to see them up against each other again. What what was... Uh, what was um, Ooh, not Sequinox changes it up. He actually puts the mech in the mid and puts the shrimp in the back. Ooh. Ooh interesting. Yeah, this is tough now for uh, Terrasic. So I will say one thing though, Elijah here. Terrasic's game plan should change drastically at this point. I feel like his goal should be to go through the front. As that backline oh. shrimp doesn't have a zero cost on it, right? Yeah. And so you know that... It. Yeah, exactly. Unless you have like a clear kill with your mech, which might be really tough. Yeah, but does he make that read or does he get too in love with the back door? That's really going to be the question. Because a lot of people that run builds like this, they're so accustomed to having success with the back door that sometimes they misidentify the adjustment. And here, like you said, if he slashes that plant, he then starts to do some serious uh, tempo work on sequinox by chomping that shrimp like like you mentioned there's no zero cost to negate the stun i guess for terasic though i mean it's he's gonna need a lot of resources got to get through that plant and then somehow get through that mech all the while while staying alive it's gonna be tough for him man i, really I, I really think so i think that his discards are gonna be vital he's gonna really want to hope to draw those and have them eliminate some critical cards of sequinox yeah My money on this one, if I had to bet, would be on Sequinox. Um, like, you know, in terms of just the way the teams match up to, to each other. Um, but my heart money, my, my heart of gold money is on uh, Terrasic 100%. Yeah, I think this is, uh, like, it looks really nice what Sequinox has set up here, but I feel like it's a lot closer than I think it is. Um I think you're right with the discards. Like those could be super clutch, but um, like not only is it interesting for him to go through the front and kill off that plant, like this this Winghorn Bone Sail guy can actually two versus one in this situation where like if he gets a first Winghorn on the midliner, starts kicking away, and where he like has a threat of killing that mech, like Sequinox might not play cards on that mech, and then you can jump the back line one turn and stun it up, and then like you know. Do some split draws, business. get yes. fancy, exactly. distribute poison, all that yep. fun stuff that that midline axie can do. Mm -hmm. Is it incredible true. how when the patch hit, poison axes tank like crazy? They were at like 0 0.05 or something from like 0 0.01, for, for like yeah. 0 0.11. And then this guy, this guy, especially because of spam and rice, this middle Expensive. poison guy Next went to like 0 0.2. Yeah. Yeah, it's expensive. Well, Spam and Rice really set the trend. I mean, he really did. He made a team that sat at number one for days on end. I don't even think he's playing it right now. Maybe he got bored of being at number one and decided to just play some teams that weren't as good so he could just, like, flop around and have some fun. I'm not sure. But, you know, if he turns it up a notch again with that team, we'll probably see him back up in that region. Um, and that's all it takes sometimes. You know, he's a streamer. He's a public presence. So people got to see that firsthand. 
and the market reacted and all these it's... axes got super expensive yeah we call that the elijah effect <laughs> elijah 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 show like shows a axie on youtube gg it's 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna skyrocket that's that's for sure uh, but I will say, though, that it's a lot harder to play that Spam and Rise build nowadays than it is before. Because everybody is, like, making sure that their deck is tech to be able to beat it, at least. Or have a yeah. shot, right? Be pre where previously, it's, like, most of the plants didn't have a shot in the game to, like, finish it off. So people have, like, adjusted their builds around it. Yeah, but we also mentioned that earlier, that, like, you know, the meta with two weeks left to go is going to be different than the meta oh, yeah. with two days left to go because everyone's constantly adjusting now sequinox going for an insane amount of energy straight out of the gate i guess there's not that much harm in that although i will mm -hmm. say this you know why i would have held those two leaf bugs because i want to leave those open to get discarded right yeah, i want to have agreed. a fuller hand so that when the parasites come in those can potentially get taken out and not my more critical cards by mm -hmm. by softening up his hand here now playing the cattail round one would have been fine the two leaf bugs you don't need all this excess energy you really matter. don't you need cards you need cards and they're going to get eliminated here in a second by Terasek. Oof, this is and he's got the kill Bro. he's got the round two kill Terasek, you absolute monster bro with the perfect rng and doesn't even give an f like if 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 doesn't even yeah doesn't care he doesn't care. doesn't care doesn't care doesn't care I was like you you have you, have, you either have a four card shrimp combo or you don't that's it pull the trigger <laughs> vamos this guy absolutely oh, man. disgusting I gotta there say, I gotta say one other thing like this um this is tough for you you know if you're Sequinox psychologically like the first game you know it's. He, he he needs to not get too phased by this. He needs to try to win this game still. Um, and it's not going to be easy. Look at this. We got a stun already. He's going to steal. No energy either. Meditate not really leaving any room for any type of momentum shift. Completely Oh, disgusting. he gets another combo again. But he's not going to pull it off right now. Um, no. Is he going to kill this plant? He needs to make sure that plant dies. I don't know. I'm, uh, I, I'm a little bit worried right now. Damn, the poison on that thing, too. And another discard. And no more Wait, energy steal. Look that, at it's going to last said, stand. What's that? He's last standing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so is. bad for Sequinox. Because I feel yeah. like if that plant dies, he had an old window to be able to kill that. Oh, he doesn't go with the stun again? Oh, he doesn't have the energy. He's he doesn't have the energy. Two. Yeah, he but got he serious did wait last to turn. see those serious get uh, burned. Oh, man, that's going to be a lot of damage. But 235 shield. I don't really think it matters because... Yeah, I'm sure he's, he's gonna fine. get around. He's alive. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah. I mean, but it's kind of insane that with almost 250 shield, look how close this is. Like, if one of these things crit, that could have been a dead dusk. Oh. Luckily for Meditate, it's a clean run out, and there's no crits. Not Meditate, Terasek. Uh, there's a clean run out, and it looks like, uh, you know, he fades yet another serious threat. Uh, wow. That's it. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah, Never in the crap. history has a plant beat a mech in a 1v1 except when I played Spam and Rice in a series in the Meta Guild Invitational. And uh, I took a game off of him with my plant by playing perfectly. <laughs> On this patch. There it is. Yeah. And game one goes to Terrasake. That was a very, an, I, again, another game where the backdoor round two um, kind of, you know, Piecing the game together for Terrasek there. Sequinox. Yeah. Yeah. So you, this kind of answers one of my questions though. Um, I was thinking about the Koi spiky wing guy. And my theory was that that Axie is not good against Poison Team. Right? Um, so uh, yeah. I think Sequinox probably feels the same way. And that's why he ran the Shrimp instead. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it was an interesting setup. I mean, I wasn't expecting to see a, a four-card shrimp on the back line, but it it makes sense in theory because mm -hmm. you're through the mech. Yeah, yeah, you're beefy. You're going to survive a lot of mech combos. It's going to take him having to backdoor twice, and you have a speed advantage. But when you draw perfect, like, what can you do? Oh, right, right back. We're into the next game. The names are swapped on the top, though, so don't mind that for now. 
it'll be changed back real quick. Um, Man, but yeah, I, yeah. Four card him, right? Four four card him, Sequinox. It's not hard, man. Just get the yeah, four card dude. combo, man. Just get your cards and hit the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is why I hate backdoors. But it's so good for the game, though. It's so it makes the game healthy. Like if you don't have backdoors, like you know, shield, like. All that stuff would just be way too OP, right? Like, we had to just go uh, through every Axie one by true, one. True, true. But, like, again, it needs some cleaning up so that backdoors cannot be as deadly as in the case with some of these mechs, uh, some of these combinations, right? Like, it shouldn't be too energy and you just kill anything. Mm -hmm. That's that's a little too far that we're but going. You know what's fun, though? Like, there's, a, there's this power about playing overpowered Axies, you know? Or like you just stomp everybody and then you know it's just so much fun to stomp uh it. well that's true <laughs> and you have that's all the power in the true. world right that, that does feel amazing to see i think you kind of i think you kind of need that in games like or people just wouldn't have fun playing games if everything was just equal like that's that's something like people don't openly talk about but it's a real thing like you play games because you want to have fun <laughs> and it's yeah. not fun if you can't just demolish your opponent sometimes <laughs> that's a good point that's a good point i mean look at the end of the day an axie it's very hard to have a team that's always demolishing like it, it's so difficult you know i've seen the run of the gambit i've seen everything come and go i've seen things be in, look invincible and then get figured out a week later and they're no longer as good, right? So while it is fun, it's just few and far between. But surely when you hit what feels like that perfect comp and you steamroll, like rip through yeah. 10 or 15 games straight, you, it's, it's one of the best feelings out there. And don't get me wrong, guys. It doesn't mean you have to go out and buy expensive axes. You're only buying expensive axes because it's already become popular. But you could find the OP axe before every, everybody else does, okay? And if you do that, then you're going to find an OP Axie for extremely cheap because you're the first one there to it. So, you know, you just gotta get that brain going. F to Elijah, he'll be back, no worries. There he is. I'm back, I'm back. No one panic. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. <laughs> just think. Now, I was just saying like, people are like, oh, so, you know, people who can't afford OP Axies, they can't have fun. But like, you're only trying to buy OP Axies for expensive because you didn't find it first right in a way because like normally some people when they find it first like it, it probably wasn't that expensive yeah no that's true we await the first draw who will draw first blood who will draw first back door and will tear sick get the discards, right? That's another big one. It's funny because discards have evolved. Like there was a time where the strategy was to make sure that you kill, kind of like wait to see plant cards and then kill the plant ideally and then rip off your discards to you make life even worse for the mid and the back line. However, now they're they're way more prevalent up front when you need to play them quicker. And also we're seeing the benefits of playing them quicker because of the way the meta has shifted into so many backdoor threats. So if you can disrupt those with discards, it's a huge deal, as we've seen in many, many of the games in this tournament. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Actually, there's not as many discards in this like tournament than there have been in other ones. Um, also, we haven't seen a single double bug comp. Oh, you're right. I don't even know if anyone like added that has that in the in the mm -hmm. weaponry. Did some? Did anyone submit that? I'm not sure. So here we are, round one. It's not looking too pretty for anyone in particular. I will say that Terasik is close once again. At the same time, so is Sequinox. He just needs Ooh, the shrimp. One shrimp away. He doesn't get the shrimp. Is he, he, he? You saw that? He was putting the cards up, thinking of putting up a sh shield to avoid the turn to kill. Yeah, because he's traumatized. Yeah. But Terasik allowed himself to go to game, this round card three. On one of the... He still didn't get it. Oh, but he's trying to backdoor. Why is he trying to backdoor? Because Double backdoor. He's got the other sneaky raid. So he's trying to 
Hmm. No, no, I like this play because what this does is it allows you to chip away at that aqua, making it yeah. easier for your poison axie later in the game. Yeah, you're right. And look, he already has two poison charges on him. That aqua is 154 HP. That's Ooh, a big deal. Awesome. And he's putting poison everywhere. He's putting poison everywhere. Mm -hmm. But look at this. The combo of death. Oh, no, that's a dead. But he's going first. Oh, he's going to chop. But, so he's going to miss one of these attacks. Does that mean that that Dusk lives? I think so. It will live. It will live. Okay, but okay. All that right. mech is going to be attacking first next turn. Yeah. Right. And there's no the energy available for Tearsake. There's no energy for either of these guys. It's not looking good for Tearsick because the mech, he's not able to get oh, to that actually. Mech. The go to yeah. follow up. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, this is bad. This is that bad might for be it. He's got, he's got no Arco. That's the other like big problem here. And now look at this. Sequinox mm -hmm. is just saving up. He's going, I got you right where I want you. You're not going to exactly. be able to do anything. Yeah. Next turn, we're going to see the full clip from both Wait of these. Oh, he's got Peacekeepers too. Wait oh, that's a, a dead. It's dead. Yeah, he's gone. That's 149. Ouch. Yeah. Damn, man. That Peacekeeper does just as much damage from a mech onto a mech as an Aqua or whatever. Would do. A burn. Yeah, pretty pretty close. Pretty close. Crazy. So, where are we at? 1-1? One, 1-1. One? One, one. That okay. is a tie series right there. Uh, I mean, if these guys are going to be playing the same team for the rest of the series and just go with the plays, you know, see who gets it. Let's just queue it right back up, boys. Come on. Uh, I want to see the action once again. I do too. I'm going to make a really quick segue, though, into our sponsor. It's yeah. been a while since we talked about them, OnChain Monkey. One of my favorite NFT projects in the space. I own 20 monkeys. I'm super hyper bullish. I got Theban to own a monkey. And then I gave him a monkey for his uh, birthday he recently. Did. Thank you for that. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I got you, bro. The floor right now, it's 0.38 for what I think is, or sorry, 0.36 for what I think is one of the best communities in crypto. And it's just a super early, like, early project, right? So anyway, these are NFTs. Be super safe. Don't invest money that you can't afford to lose, right? But I think that of all the ones I've come across, I have a lot of faith in this one. And they've donated five Ethereum to this tournament to help people in the Philippines, which we're super grateful about. And uh, yeah, and then also let's go ahead and move right into where people can donate. There's going to be links in the chat here on where you can uh, swing over to to help out as well. So OnChain Monkey gave five ETH. I gave an Ethereum uh, earlier this week or last week, and um, it doesn't even have to be that big, guys. Like if you can do five bucks, right? You imagine a hundred people do that, it starts to add up. A thousand people do that, it starts to add up. In so the Philippines, can... Elijah, $5 is a lot of money, man. It, it, it's like, I mean, you can feed yourself for a couple of days, like, just yeah. with that. Like, it, it goes a long way. Like, you cannot scoff at any little amount or whatever amount, actually. Yeah. No, you're, you're, no, I'm not. I, I agree with you completely. Yeah. Um, someone, someone asked, uh, what the monkey is. They're on, they're on OpenSea. So you can just go to on chain monkey on OpenSea. Just, and check it out for yourself but do your own research first like don't just take my word for it right go look into the project look at the founders bill ties a billionaire he's one of them like they're just brilliant people over there in my opinion right um but yeah no you're right about you're right about money going a long way and that's why if we all give a little bit then uh it can make a huge difference um yeah it's at on chain monkey on twitter i'm rocking the hat there's only a hundred of these that these are the first hundred that came out i got one early on um just go on OpenSea and uh, yeah, I guess I can link you right here, actually. Dude, I need your hat. <laughs> There'll be more. Hat. There'll be more in the future. <laughs> no, but I want your hat. There we go. Uh, oh, I appreciate that, Theban. But I did. <laughs> I, <laughs> I gave you a monkey already, damn it. No, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> I want the um, hat tuna. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, Zero, if you can pull up the first place prize. So it's it's going to be um, five AXS, but also an on-chain monkey, uh, which is, like I said, the floor is 0.36. So it's going to be that for first, 15 AXS for second, and then 10 AXS for third is what these players are competing for. We want to also, you know, give charity in this, but also incentivize our players and look after them as well. And a lot of these guys live in the Philippines too, so... Um, 
or in, in countries where the economies aren't that great. So we're, we, you know, we're happy to help out the players in Axie Infinity through hosting events like this as much as we can. Exciting and very amazing, helpful times. I mean, I wish like opportunities like this were available even before. Um, but you know, it's just so much easier nowadays, right? Where it's so easy to transact, you know, give, give or make transactions, whatever you call it, like with the blockchain and all of that. I, personally, I feel like I wish I knew about this way earlier. You know, I, I was stuck for like 10, 12 years in Dota 2 and I didn't know anything about anything, to be honest, apart from games. And I come into Axie Infinity, I learned so much about finances, community building, um, you know, investing, you know, and uh, like even being able to afford to help others as well. Yeah, it's super special. I think we're living in a really unique time right now that we're all here early to these paradigm shifts, early to NFT gaming, right? And it's really special. And that's the thing, like reason Axie is so positive compared to like toxic legacy gaming communities is because for one, we're doing good in the world, right? With play to earn, we're helping out economies, we're helping out people around the globe. And for two, we all own our assets. Like we feel, we feel fulfilled playing the game because we're not just throwing away our money into a corporate structure. Okay, we got some action here. Cattail round one, and he lost the shim card. Did, well, no, he didn't. Did he? Yeah, he did. did. I, he I lost behind? Oh, I got a I was on the. I was. A, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, he did lose a piranha just now. So he's one card behind there. Um, there's a lot of bone sales in Terasek's hand. He's got a, he's got a four of a kind. Yeah, <laughs> right there. He does. But not the card that he's looking for, though. Literally no beast cards. No, nothing on his mech. Mm -hmm. Still nothing on the mech, and but still no shrimp as well. Now he should have a chomp incoming, right? Like a winghorn chomp. I mean, he just used one of two of his poisons, so You're he right. needs to be able to. Oh, he doesn't get the chomp either. But I don't know. He wouldn't have had the energy to be able to play it. No, I think this one's over because yeah. now, now, now the problem is uh, he's even trying to go back door to kill the aqua, but I don't think it's even enough with. The twin tail, but if he if he does this and then redraws, actually wait, kills he can this. redraw actually, here. He's he killing can it. Redraw he's killing here. it. He's killing yeah, he it. can he's redraw here. It. No, oh my god, he doesn't have cards. He the mech doesn't oh have god. cards. He's got this. Oh he's my god, this. He's you're done kidding it. me. That's got gonna it. be as a dead mech, right? He's dead. Oh he's my dead. god. Oh my goodness. Terasik is an animal. It's dead. You're kidding me. The poison. Wow. Oh, wow. Ashley, Terasek's going to the finals. What a savage. Where's this kid from? Jeez. I can't believe it. Holy shit. I don't know. I don't know what I just saw, but that was insane. Dude, at some point, I was like, ah, oh, this is over. I was like, this is over. Terasek did well. He made it, you know, to the top four, but like, it's not going to be, it's not there for him. And then like, do you know how he barely won? I think it was that turn where he played the Teal Shell into the, like the Yam, like turn two or whatever. Yeah, but I called that at the very beginning of the match, Steven. I said that there's going to be unnecessary Teal Shells being used because he's afraid of the back door. And I think that round two is too... I'm, I'm sorry, I think round two is too preemptive. We can't be playing scared Axie Infinity, right? It's going to bite us It's going to bite us in the back. Like, mm -hmm, exactly. Round, round two playing a Teal Shell, that's just being paranoid, right? Yeah, it, I it, agree. If Terasik draws the perfect combo of Dual Blade, yeah. Double Furball, and plays it round two, well then so be it you lost mm -hmm. you lost right like it's so unlikely that he has that exact combo of cards that you just have to just be a little more patient maybe throw one out maybe in round three if you're really afraid and you anticipate he's going to be hooked on trying to backdoor you but that you're right that cost him those poison ticks throughout the game man that was crazy bro <laughs> i got cut in half i don't know what happened here uh zero my man 
Okay, okay. You oh, think you can okay. get us fixed? <laughs> Patch us up, bro. <laughs> pa Patch <Thomas>. me up. <laughs> oh, there we go. He's back. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, dude. Me, that was insane. That was actually... Oh, man. <sighs> man. Axie is insane, bro. That's the thing. You're right. Like, we were talking about this, how in tournaments, like, you know, you need to make those cold plays and stuff. And, like, the, the tier shell play is more like, I'm going to play the most safest route possible kind of move. Yeah. Right? And, like, like you said, like, that was just one of those turns where you just got to be like, yo, it's turn two. I got 400 plus health. Like. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, I'm just going to chill, like. I, I agree. I agree with you. That that was too costly, too too like uh, wasting too many resources. But again, guys, it's always easier to say it in hindsight. Like we're sitting over here, they're in the thick of the battle. Um, hats off to Sequinox and all of the competitors today. Thanks for everyone showing up, putting on these amazing games. It's been mm -hmm. so much fun. And remember, there's going to be a battle for third place as well. Look at me over here. Mm -hmm. Where's my Where's my hand? I I can, I can see your hand. Yeah. Wow, look at those gestures. Those are phenomenal hand gestures. Okay. My goodness. Hey, well, guys, listen up. Um, we're going to have the finals very soon. Uh, it's going to be Terrasek versus Dissy Boy from YGG. So we got Meditate versus YGG in the finals. That's that's beautiful, man. That's that a, that's a beautiful, beautiful storyline. I love it. Um, we're going to be seeing Anemones. <laughs> i'm not i'm not ready for that but uh before that though we will be taking a very quick five minute break and then it looks like we're gonna be having a special guest yeah uh, on the call so please don't go anywhere guys we'll be back shortly
have you seen there that, that uh, has needed the most relief? What have you guys, how have you been attacking the situation? Because we're all eager to give. We're encouraging everyone to give. And I think it helps people be able to give, like just when they know a little bit more of like, okay, where are these funds going? What's being prioritized? If you can fill our viewers in a little, I think that they would love to hear that. And uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, how it went. So um, it's been um, a bit more than five days before, um, after landfall rather. And it's been tricky because so the first two, two days, we didn't really have any contact whatsoever. We didn't have any news how bad it was until, you know, the last few videos, the last few photos that were uploaded by people from these regions that were affected uh, were uploaded. But, you know, right after landfall, it was complete total um, radio silence, basically. And yeah, it's been only uh, about 24 to 48 hours. Then we started getting some news. And what was really tricky was it was about to go on a weekend and for relief efforts, this might be a bit complicated because um, you would have for these kinds of amounts, for these kinds of um, these kinds of um, calamities that are really, really huge. You're going to have a ton load of supplies like you need a lot. So you have to go straight to the distributors. You have to go straight to um, the partners. And um, yeah, it's been quite challenging. But um, on the onset, 24 hours right after we got the news, um, we did it. We had to do it manually. We had to go to the local drug stores. We bought medicines. Medicines were the first priority, especially for those um, for the medical missions by private entities who went right after. Um, in terms of um, of the LGUs of the government and um, other relief efforts, um, the, these take a bit much longer to organize. But it was the private sectors that you know that just led the led the front and just went straight in. Um, we had private planes, we had private helicopters going in, and it was a good thing that um, our contacts reached out directly to us, and we did have the funds from those who directly donated. And yeah, medicines, um, milk for babies, diapers and everything first aid was shipped right out 24 hours um over the weekend this was a bit more challenging as well as i mentioned because um we did we did have to wait a bit for uh, for the office hours to open on a monday and that's when we were able to contact uh, distributors manufacturers and um, luckily um thankfully with the help of the philippine army and the philippine navy we were able to ship out um huge quantities to the deepest and the farthest parts of uh, the philippines that were affected um though these this is only um the first part i would say we're only at maybe at 15 and 15 percent 20 percent at the most um on the relief efforts that we want to happen um this is the first batch we've sent out uh we've sent out over um, i'd say fifty thousand sixty thousand dollars in food and water um via the philippine navy and this is only one ship so there's going to be another ship that's going to be scheduled pretty soon once we get feedback and also um uh, we've been hearing uh we've been hearing efforts from the air force will be jumping in and helping also um uh, drop some supplies but yeah overall we've raised we've raised over 30 million pesos um i'd say that's around over uh, six hundred thousand dollars but um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, it's gonna take a while uh, to rebuild everything, but you know I'm really grateful and really happy on how this has turned out. And I'd say I'd be speaking for the whole team that you know that we are very proud as a community, as a greater community, to see you know how blockchain can actually make an impact um, on on the real world, especially in these times of situations and in these times of need. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's moving hearing all of that. And again, just reinforces my gratitude for YGG. It's just so impressive what you guys are doing in such a difficult situation that we're able to rally behind you, that you are a trusted name in the community and that you're taking these steps with government officials, with everyone that you can. You have the reach that you have because of what you've done and what you've built. And uh, we're all really grateful for you and grateful that we can come together and contribute. We're going to get through this together as a family, as an Axie family, blockchain family. You know, this this is what's changing the world. The fact that we can make borders across, sorry, payments across borders without exactly. regulatory things inhibiting us from doing what we need to do um, and want to do, right? So whether it's play to earn or whether it's helping us get through a crisis, um, 
that's why we're in love with this new technology. So thank you so much for being here, Sedano, uh, and showing up and doing what you're doing and, and giving us that report. That means a lot to me to hear about the supplies, to hear about where the immediate efforts went, where future efforts are going, who you're working with. Uh, that integrity means so much. So thanks for showing up here today. Of course, of course. Um, I'm glad to be here. And yeah, good luck to everyone um, on the show, on the tournament. And of course, yeah, shout out to OnChain Monkey, you know, for sponsoring the event. And, you know, um, Stibs, um, Elijah, um, you guys, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Um, hope to hear from you guys soon. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Damn, dude, that is just, that just melts my heart, man. Like, yeah, I have a baby too. too, and like, just hearing like, you know, like, just like, just that key word, just saying like, the milk for the babies, like, that just like, that just, you know, it just sunk my heart even further, like, I was already there, and then, ah, uh, like, the thing is, guys, what we need to understand is, you know, some of us were fortunate to win, like, you know, the birth lottery, sort of say, right? Like, where we live in the world, you know, how comfortable we get, and like, not everybody has that and not everybody you know was born into a situation where they can you know live a comfortable life like some of us do and that's where it comes down to us who do have a little bit more than others to be able to you know help out share uh, and whatnot and like make sure that you know us humans in general are able to get past this uh, it's, it's just it's just incredible what they're doing, man. Like hearing that, like YGG, you know, I my now I know what our goal is. So yeah, I, I want to be like YGG one day and I'll be able to also go out and make a real difference in the real world. Absolutely. I know. And that's like, that's what we have the opportunity to do as, as guilds, as uh, Axie community members. It's, I say this, I said this before, community building is more important than winning, right? There's so much strength. Mm and us coming together and working toward the greater good. And and I'll, I'll be honest with you, that's there's a lot of similarities between what we're doing at Axie and on Chain Monkey. It, it just is the truth. I just dropped the Discord link for them if anyone's interested in passionate, like good-hearted NFT projects. Cause I didn't even have to, I, like I didn't even have to twist an arm a little bit. I reached out to Danny, hey, do you guys wanna be involved? It was like that. They're like, yeah, we'll give five Ethereum. And I was like, wow, that's that's amazing, right? So, so much love out there. Um, it's great seeing communities come together throughout the metaverse. Um, there's the Twitter. Thanks so much uh, for posting that. And just in case anyone was confused, uh, I didn't write next to it. This is the uh, the Discord. I, I hold 20 monkeys, okay? I love this, this, this community. I love YGG. I love Axie. I love you guys. This tournament's been amazing. All the feels. Uh, man, that was great. Big thanks to Sedano for coming on here and giving us that report. That meant a lot to me. So let's, uh, let's keep it moving here. And on that note, real quick, pull up the... We're getting to the finals here, right? So mm -hmm. we first have the third place match. Yeah. Pull up the winner, the winner, the uh, first place prize, so we can get a little taste of that before we jump into it. It's gonna be so right. We're about to compete for third place, and I think third place is getting ten AXS. Um, and then zero. If you can pull up, you got the monkey. The monkey. You got the monkey itself. Hoping. Yeah. See, let me see that beautiful monkey face. And then we'll jump right into the. You can tell them to jump into the games right now because mm -hmm. it takes. Like four so minutes we, or whatever. So we got uh, 10 AXS for the third place. We got um, 15 AXS for second place. And first place is the OCM. Uh, the, 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 this one is Elijah. So you got it's, it's the other one, the first one uh, that you had. I got um, it. I'm going to send it to him right now. Okay, cool. And then yeah. it's going to be the OCM uh, and 5 AXS. Uh, I mean, that monkey is worth like, what? Almost $2,000? Yeah, almost, almost half to? an yeah. ETH. Yeah, so this is, a, yeah, this is a OCM one. It's on chain, fully on chain, so it can never be messed with. It's not stored in like an iCloud or Google storage drive or uh, Google Cloud. Sorry, I'm fumbling my words. Uh, it was created on Ethereum, hence the name. It's just the most secure NFT that you can have. And that's why it has some simplistic features, but I, I love the way these look. And you're gonna get, for everyone who holds one of these, they're gonna get a second monkey 
airdropped to them in 2022, which will look a little bit different if you can pull up mine and then we'll jump right into the game. So it's just a cool incentive that they're doing extra artwork and you're getting a free NFT for every monkey that you own. That thing right there is an OCM2 or an OCM Karma. And that's uh, reflective of one of mine. So that was a great recap of our sponsors and YGG. And we got more action. We got a best of three coming up here for... Um, who do we have here for the third place match? It's going to be Spam and Rice versus Sequinox. Uh, so that's going to be... Oh, actually, we, we're already in it. We're on round two. Oh, my goodness. We missed a, a little bit of the action, but that's all right. It looks like, uh, Elijah, your camera has also been cut off. I might want to oh, pop that back right. on. I all good. So, yeah. So, this is going to be a best of three, guys. Not a best of five. Don't worry. Um, and... We got Spam here playing a shrimp in the middle with the Poison Winghorn in the back. And Sekunox playing a shrimp in the back with a mech in the middle. Uh, very interesting. Both players having a little bit of mind games with each other here. Very much so. Spam and Rice deciding that he is... Uh, you know, one thing I like about what he's done, he's been super flexible. The card draw hasn't really worked out for him this game. But let's see if he can secure a third place finish for some prize money. We know Sekunox is going to put up a fight. And uh, wow, double Gota coming in clutch here. However, one energy gets taken back on the Sirius. So that works out kind of evenly. Actually, in the end, Sequinox gets the better end of the energy exchange. But that's also because Spam and Rice did a ton of damage. That plant is now down to 202 HP. Yeah, that I would I will say Sequinox is uh, slightly behind here. Um, his shrimp also doesn't really want to jump into that dusk in the back i mean he does have the revenge arrows which is a very strong card but he would need to have two jumps at least to be able to kill off that dusk so it's it's awkward right where like you need your mech to pretty much kill this plant and then have your uh shrimp and your mech to kill that midliner but then you're left off fighting in a 1v2 situation against this Winghorn, Bone Sail, Poison Axie, which can, as we've seen before, can actually win 1v3 oh, it, it, it can It can work some magic, let's be real. It, it can pull mm -hmm. off miracles. Um, Terasic is going into the finals off of one of the most insane games I've witnessed since being in Axie Infinity, where he dropped his mech, didn't even try to play any energy on it, and went into a... like, went deep into his soul to pull out a win... One of the biggest this, clutches ever. One of the biggest clutches ever. We'll say that. <laughs> it was pretty crazy, not going to lie. All right, so now we've got some action happening. Some guns ablazing. The plant goes down up front. We're going to get two revenge arrows on the back aqua and a very clean kill. Slight yeah. overkill here, but then again, he was anticipating maybe some the shield chomp. up front on the plant. He was also and anticipating now, a chomp there. True. Oh man, this is a lot of oh, damage. Dude, that's a dead that's a dead shrimp. That's a, that's dead, a dead aqua. Shrimp. It's a dead aqua. He's gone. He's gone. This is what I meant. Like he was storing Sekunox was storing up the cards to get that kill on the plant and a follow-up kill right away. And uh, he's into... doing no damage here with the poisons. He is distributing poison, but no actual damage done to the yeah. face of that mech. And now he's gonna go back door. It's a four card. This is a one of the pitfalls of this Sequinox backliner that we talked about. Mm -hmm. It's a non-zero cost backliner. And look at this Dusk doing serious work here, making life an absolute hell for Sequinox. Now, we have Sequinox coming in with a massive clip, but at the same time, we have big shield on Spam and Rice. So it's gonna be close. Now he's gonna miss his first attack. That's why he's leading with the Peace Treaty because that's the slowest damage card. He is faster. And yeah, he is faster than this Dusk, so it's going to be a matter of if he rips off another combination. He only has two energy. Ooh, he gets a crit on one of the fur balls, he's followed a by a peace treaty. He's got both twin tails. Oh, he's got double. That's it. Sekunox got it. The clean draw right there. The double twin tails. And that's the W. Wow, my guy drew perfectly right there. That was perfect. That was so perfect for him.
the spam and rice Bro. gonna go down in game number one as as the words were coming out as the word twin tail was coming out of your mouth two of them just flew out into his hand you were like as if he gets the twin tail boom two of them perfect plus the that's aqua it. damage wow that's it that's all i needed and that's what and now spam is one game away from being eliminated so I wonder at this point what he's going to go with. Because he knows he can't put that mech in the back. Like, it's just too dangerous. Um, he doesn't have a speed up Axie either. Like, this Arco mech is doing so much work, Elijah. Like, I feel the power of it. I do too. I do too. And it's quite impressive, I must say. It's very impressive. Mm -hmm. And it's... Peacekeeper as well. Yes, uh, that too. I was also going to mention how that's something that you wouldn't actually... Um, you might look at that and go, oh, this is a subpar mech, right? But, but there's the speed, bro. Mm -hmm. The speed. Like, there's something about that with the Arco, too. Like, you're going to be ahead of everything in those close mirror matches and so on, even against those Dusks that are 51. You're, you're, uh, you're in good shape. I think the biggest weakness for these guys is gonna come down to like discard teams and like there, there there just wasn't any bugs there's no double bugs it's like we saw the plant but we didn't see any double bugs i feel like someone should have at least had one you know double bug set plus another team on the side or something um it's yeah, interesting it's it's honestly fascinating that they haven't been there given how uh, popular they are in arena we haven't seen it once it's a bit of a shocker mm -hmm. um i don't know if terasic ever played i don't think terasic plays nah, that he, he does he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't yeah so we're not going to see it from him in the finals and i'm pretty sure that his opponent we've already seen enough of his axes to know he doesn't have it so it's going to be a bugless tournament which i gotta say I'm literally, happy literally about. A bu not, not even one not even one but that doesn't mean that we're free of cheese because our boy, <laughs> we got a whole lot of cheese wrapped up in that team, folks. So here we go. Game number two, spam down one game. He decides to change it up, put the shrimp in the back. Uh, he removes his bone sail dusk and now he's added his mech into the middle. So for Sequinox, what do you think is the game plan for him? Does he decide to try to shrimp the shrimp or does he decide to go through the frontier? Well, I just got to say this. I think this is absolutely disgusting what Spam and Rice has decided to do. And it's no mistake that he has this comp. He planned for this. He planned to have two backdoor axes. So if he ever wanted to go to this type of threat, he could. And here he is breaking it out. He actually has three backdoor axes because he has a post-fight little owl bird that he could have relied on as well. Mm -hmm. So I think this now heavily favors spam. Um, I, my bet is on him this game. I think he'll be able to do insane uh, work here and, and get rid of the aqua. And then there you, again, you have it for the follow-up again on the mech. So backdoor, backdoor, dead, everything. I see that happening this game. And the problem for Sequinox is it's just one backdoor versus two backdoors. And the mech isn't going to be able to get as much. I think the mech, the midline mech is going to have a problem. But again, it all just depends how quickly does he get through this plant, right? Because mm -hmm. if he so, can, he can Arco, he can... What you're trying to tell me is Sequinox is going to be in a little bit more of a rush to use that shrimp cards. Um, and maybe use it to kill the plant in the front. Uh, so the way that I picture this battle is like Sequinox using the shrimp and then that midline mech storing up cards where he has a turn where he finishes off that plant with a speed up and then he kills the mech in the middle as well. The okay, turn. Theban, but then what? Then what happens? The Aqua beats the mech. The Aqua mm -hmm. beats the mech, right? Oh, this is huge. So for, for me, at least, I was thinking what whether Spam is like going to get value from this plant before it dies. And he gets so much value. Oh my god, are you watching this, bro? Yeah, I'm watching this. This, this double seeing... backdoor, it's coming oh through. Oh my god. No way. Insane. So get dirty. The card. <laughs> this is sick. So this mech now is going to go back there. It's going to maybe even be a bit of an overkill. Because he goes backdoor to Furball Twin Tail, which is... No Definite. No, no, sorry. One furball. Okay, so this will actually be pretty close to perfect in terms of execution. I don't know. I I, I feel like Sekunox, he's still 
has something up his sleeve here. He's got the speed ups. <laughs> Dude, you're right. He's got the Arcos and he's got that mech that has just been like a dream machine, believe it or mm -hmm. not. And now here's another problem. That's not going to be a dead plant. So time is starting to run a little bit thin here for spam and rice because look at this. This mech is going down here. Yeah. And now what? He's got to contend with a plant, still a plant body that's alive, and then another. And then and he only a has mech two energy. Speed up. Oh man, this is bad news. It's bad news. And for the spam. plant's still gonna live here and do damage. Yeah. It's it. It's. I mean, it's already done. It's. It's already game over. He already killed it with that draw from ah, the mech there. I, I told you, this. This mech man. This, this mech, mech is special. Don't this mech is special. The damage. No, you know, you're right. You're right. Shrimp this has a... no shield either, right? With the hero and like. Yeah. No, Ooh. it's a be It's a beautiful mech. It's a beautiful mech. I'm getting some inspiration. I'm not gonna lie. He's done it. It's game over, and that's gonna be it. So we got uh, Sequinox here, gonna be 2 zeroing Spam and Rice. So he's gonna secure himself third place and 10 AXS. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, that was a great run. Um, what do you think, Elijah? Yeah, congrats to Sequinox. He came in here after losing uh, to... Who did he lose to? Uh, Terasek. He came in here and was talking in the chat, and I could I could tell he was like down on himself, not down on, too much on himself, but just felt like ah, I was so close. So it's good to see that passion, you know, return and get the third place finish. I love Spam and Rice as well. Would have been happy to see him get a podium finish too. But Sequinox uh, showing up there in the end, and he played really really well, and he he had a great team composition. So congrats to him for sure. Exactly, and now it looks like uh, we're going to be having our finals up next. Dissy Boy from YGG versus Tersake from Meditate. Ah, uh, man, I couldn't have scripted this better. This is yeah, no, I'm I'm incredible. super thrilled about this. Can we get a tweet out there, uh, somebody, Zero? I'm going to try to write one up, too, yeah. um, about the finals. Uh, go ahead and if you can also plug well while I do that, Thieben, if you want to just plug the donation links for any new viewers here, mm -hmm. just for the uh, YGG donations and talk oh, about. What you we're guys doing. can go here. Um, donation. I think chat the bot is lagging at the moment, but you'll see the link very soon. Uh, you got the Ronin account that you can send to um, the tip site there too. Everything will be forwarded to the relief efforts. And yeah, I mean, I just want to say, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, we got so many people who have come through this channel today to watch some amazing Axie. I know it's been a long day too, uh, especially for the players here. They've been playing some incredible games and been watching some incredible games. I just love everything that Axie's like what Axie has been able to do. I, I can't really say Axie because, you know, the community is also the one who made all this possible, but I love what this community has been able to do um, with this invitational and the support that you guys have been giving. All right, we got Dissy Boy, right, in the finals, and this is amazing. This is so cool that there's a YGG guy in the finals too. <laughs> finals is a best of five. This is true take a look here yep best of five finals dissy boy so let's take a look at like the teams that dissy boy has brought so far he has a double plant team with a toothless bird then he also had a double anemone team uh, with a toothless bird i did it i don't think i got to see what his last axie was was it a shrimp i think it was a shrimp his sixth axie was a shrimp then for tear sake uh he's playing the mech same thing, very similar to Spam's team, and I think he's also got some plants uh, in there that we ha haven't seen him play at all. This is exciting, man. What, a, what an event it's been. And the, the chat's been amazing. Our guests have been amazing. And we got a sick best of five on the way. And you know what? I just want to say quick shout out to OnChain Monkey for making all of this possible, guys. Like, it's just 
again, we wouldn't be here having this great tournament and you guys being able to watch this great, great games and listen to all this amazing commentary coming from Elijah. Like th this is just a once in, I don't even know how long opportunity. So thank you so much on chain monkey for that. And all the charitable things that you guys do out there. Uh, and you know, the big donation as well that you guys have given. Absolutely. All right. I'm about to tweet this out. Isn't it? It's five AXS for first plus the monkey, right? Cause I yes. just don't want to mess that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I'll post a photo. I wish I had a different photo for the finals here uh, other than just the main banner, but I don't think I do. So I'll go with that. Unless we have something on the stream that I can take a screenshot of. But both players are in their respective corners getting ready for the action. Uh, I'm just going to do a screenshot of the actual <laughs> event right now. That'll be fun. So... Oh um yeah someone someone knew exactly what i said someone some some guy in chat said my heart is divided i am part of meditate community but i am an anemone player <laughs> ah so this guy yeah <laughs> listen there's no anemone comps in the you know in the academy okay i don't, I don't know what you're doing there <laughs> <laughs> we we love you but we also want you to grow past playing an enemy so just as long as you don't only play an enemies then we're gonna be good <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna find your name in discord right now <laughs> <laughs> never mind zero's already on it he read my mind none yet yeah. there will never be an anemone comp in there promise you <laughs> no hidden link for enemies there isn't all right sequinox thank you so much for playing have a good night sir Thanks, Equinox. Thanks for showing up, man, and killing it. Third place is really, really impressive, honestly. Any podium finish in Axie Infinity, I've just a lot of respect for that. You know, it's a hard-fought battle. Good night, Equinox. You killed it. You crushed it. And uh, look forward to seeing you play more in the future. Never forget Teal Shell and Spike Ewing. You're right, man. That was a very impressive uh, showing of that Axie. I really enjoyed it. It was cool. I mean, you were literally one play away from making it to the finals, so uh, that was uh, that was a tough that was a tough one for sure. Yeah. This yeah, this final is about to be spicy, man. I I, I don't know. I, I I have some theories as to what's gonna happen, but I'm I'm not sure if we want to spoil that before the grand finals. I think we shouldn't, right? Considering you know what what's what's uh like axes are in play here i'm sorry you think you have some prediction oh shoot. oh well we're already here i guess the there it is the double plants oh, are out against oh, the anemones oh snap terasek like reading the situation understanding that he hasn't shown a single different look all tournament which has led Dissy Boy into believing that Double an Enemy Bird would be phenomenal because it would be phenomenal against that mech backliner. Mm -hmm. However, there is no mech backliner, and Tursik has busted out the plants. Whose bird is faster? I can't hmm. tell. I think we'll be able to see once the cards That's get a 10 million bird. Uh, Who? That's Who a 9 that? million bird. So whose is quicker? It's, it's uh, Dissy Boy's. Dizzy Boy's bird's quicker. This Dizzy Boy's bird is quickie, yeah. But here's the you thing: Dizzy this. Boy might have a quicker bird, a faster bird. But like, dude, these two plants—they're nasty against Agreed. this team. Agreed. Agreed. I think in these situations, like the plants are far more dangerous than the bird is. I agree. I agree. As long, I'll tell you this much: he doesn't even need to backdoor that bird. Mm -hmm. All he needs to do, in my opinion is is get value out of it to kill one of these this top aqua if you can use that bird plus that top plant to kill that aqua then he's in a great position with the other two plants and you know dizzy boy will probably be scared of the bird and backdoor it but then there's going to be two disgusting full hp plants versus an aqua and a bird and typically the plants are going to win in that situation but again we'll have to see 
I will say this though: the Gota Cottontail is so much stronger than the Lamb Nemo Anemone. Yeah. Oh, I agree. So we haven't really seen Gota Cottontail against Immortal Plants quite yet. Like, no, you're as, right. Like, yeah. So we need to actually, you know, maybe dial it back us a little bit and like see how this plays out. You're totally right. That's something I even slightly overlooked here in that the tempo of this game, plant builds are already slow. This is going to be like agonizingly slow for Tersek. Like he's going to be getting pushed back, pushed back, go to, go to, go to. Like it's going to be tough for him to gain the momentum. Uh, and then by that point, you know, is his bird going to have gotten the value? Is his bird going to be dead? Because he can destroy energy and gain energy all game, Dissy Boy can. And that's something that we cannot say the same for as far as Meditate Terasic. Yeah, no no energy gaining source whatsoever. Um, you know, a part of me kind of wishes Dissy Boy will at least take a game or two with this anemone so that I can unload my Gota Cottontail anemone. <laughs> I'm looking to unload. You're a savage, bro. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I bought one for an experimental team. Uh, it's not double anemones, guys. Get, okay, there's a there's a difference between anemone and double anemones. We have no love for double anemones. Okay, single anemones. Single that's another story. All right, single anemone. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Go to turn one. Double go to turn oh, one. Ooh, dude. that's rough already. That's what I was trying Woo! to say. Painful. Yeah, that hurts. And but... he had the clip too on Terrasek, like to be able to, you know, take yeah, one yeah, of these yeah. guys out. But hang on a second. As long no as he doesn't draw anymore. two more Godas and he survives, I mean, he's got the combo. He doesn't have the energy. Exactly. He's... God, man, that's crazy. That's a that's a sad situation to be in. And look at this. Dissy Boy going back up to four energy, Terrasic only at three, plant already weak, slower bird, definitely not a good situation for Terrasic at this point. And this is the problem with the with the double and enemy teams, is like Oh man. Okay, well the, the one thing about this is that the bird has not drawn the bird is not getting the same type of love on Dizzy Boy's team, and he doesn't get another Gota. So he would need to draw uh, two more bird cards, including the Toothless next round, to be able to snap off Terrasic's bird. Now, the question is, does Terrasic go into a panic here and play his three bird cards? It would not be wise, in my opinion, considering the fact that he wouldn't even get the kill uh, because he doesn't have a follow-up attack with anything. Only three energy is not going to get it done. So, I mean, I think being this far behind, I would imagine that he will realize, okay, my only chance is to pass here, pray he gets bad card draw, doesn't have the combo next round, and then he can make something happen one way or the other. Okay, there we go. So now he doesn't get the back door. Uh, this plant is going to die, but the thing is, this bird will be alive for the rest of the game. Um until he chomps his way through this massive plant at the midline. So the tides have shifted, Theban. What are you thinking? I'm thinking he shouldn't have transferred the buff there. I'm thinking he shouldn't have ripped off three energy as well into the into the uh, plant there, because that really hurt him. That really slowed him down The three. I guess he was anticipating an attack on his aqua and going to try to brick wall and heal up. But at this point, round three, you have to think that Tersic is probably going to be trying to be a little backdoor hungry as well in a lot of situations there. So that was a, a, a handful of energy sort of down the drain and hit into a plant that was on its way out anyway. Yeah. Okay. I, I see I see what you mean. Um so now it's just a matter of patience, right? Like just wait for the yeah. full click to be able to kill off these, you know, anemones one by one. Uh he's right now Terasik is hoping to get his attacks to the top axi here. He's praying for that. He's praying for that. It oh, does it not goes down. Wait a minute. Does that kill him, right? Dead, dead aqua. Oh, that's, oh that's my a full god. Oh my goodness. Cactus damage through the roof. Dude, he didn't play the cotton tails. No, he didn't, but I don't know. He had two of them or one of them? One he had of them. Two. He had died. two. I don't know why Terasik is playing cards here. I guess I, I guess he just doesn't care about his. Yeah, he yeah, he, no. he he just doesn't want to get drained, right? Like it's yeah, just no, a no, matter. No, I, I got it. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, but see now, I mean, it's 
kind of awkward. I think if, like you said, if he just stays patient and at this point stays patient, hits him with like one or two plant cards and then gets to follow up with the bird because Dizzy Boy has no speed manipulation. Mm -hmm. So that could definitely be a way to close this out. There uh, it is. Oh goes. boy. Yeah. Day shields. Oh no, that's a dead aqua. That's it. Ouch. All right, I guess we know the answer to this. Uh, but uh, to be fair, like he obviously didn't get the back door onto that yeah. bird. Um, it, it would have been interesting though had he played the two cotton tails like and lived. Like he could have actually got a heal or something. But at the same time, the toothless, where does that go? That goes to the bottom axie, right? If that happens too, but he yeah, yeah, should goes, be able to put like a big enough shield or something. It does. It goes to the bottom to axie. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Man, Tarasek with the backdoor card draw really working out for him um but you know what man i i can't wait to like i feel like we need to make a youtube video on that one game that he played what no matter the outcome whether he gets first or second here that to me was still the highlight of this tournament you still can't I, get I, over it huh I, I can't get over it i want to go see what happened there again because it was just baffling i'm like i don't understand he, yeah. he was preparing for a 1v3 with a dusk versus a, a mech and a what was it an aqua in the back mm -hmm. yeah but we're I far mean, this 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 series is just getting started though that was just game one yeah that was just game one exactly um i mean we were th we were wondering whether like you know the goda cottontail should be enough but in this game we saw that it was actually not enough uh especially if the bird doesn't draw the back door at, at the least right like Terasik yeah. had the back door now are they gonna run it back what do you think are they gonna is he gonna try to anemones again or i i get the feeling Terasik is gonna like like flip around here to a comfort team because he's got a one game advantage he feels super strong with his mech he's even been playing it against disadvantage uh, at a disadvantage versus some team comps and not really giving an f so he might just go to that and say, hey, can I rip off a second game with my other team, switch things up, throw him for a loop, make, keep him guessing, essentially, right? If you see someone play one team and then they suddenly play another one, then you really don't know what the hell is going to happen in the third in the third round, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they Let's choose. take a look. We got the game so we can see exactly what they're going to be running here. He's going with the plants again. Wow. And, uh, I'm pretty sure the names are changed here. I think so, yeah, because Terasek doesn't are changed. have... Yeah, Terasek yeah. is the one on the right side. Dizzy Boy yeah. is on the left side. So Dizzy Boy is the one who changes it up, goes for the um, the mech plus the bird. He, goes he does for... have the faster bird too. Yeah, he basically goes for a hard counter here, um, which you can't you can't blame him right and he reads he reads that mm, tersic is going to stick with this team which he does so hats off to dizzy boy <clears throat> on paper he has the advantage here now if that plant had scaly spoon at the middle <clears throat> he'd have less of an advantage still still an advantage though i would say mm. Something tells me we go into game three, one, one, but I could, you know, I could be wrong. <laughs> we are. I think this is just. You, you think so? <laughs> I think this is a mismatch for Terasek. <clears throat> yeah. You know, yeah. the problem for Terasek is what does he do? I feel like he needs to get creative this series um, because if he just decides to switch over to his classic team, but Dizzy Boy sticks with this bird on the back. I mean, that's not looking great for him with having a mech on his back line. So I'm not sure the best route for him moving forward. It could just be plopping that bird in the middle and putting a plant on the back line. That could be something to consider at least. I think I would have liked that if if, if Terasek had the bird in the middle or something uh, of that sorts. Um, yeah, I don't know if he's really even sweet. thinking about that though, really, because he doesn't yeah. play double plant bird that much. He also changed his lineup. Like he actually expected a change up here, because before he had the plants rearranged, right, um, with the front plant like connected with the bird, or maybe he just oh, felt like right. he wanted the cactus uh, on the same line as the bird. Maybe that's yeah, also yeah. something. Uh, that's interesting. <clears throat> I wonder why he did that. Mechs 
birds it's funny the only axie we haven't seen in this whole tournament bugs. has been bugs I, I i guess reptile too right there, there hasn't been any reptiles yeah but come on who plays reptiles who plays reptiles that's true exactly that's why nobody played it but i'm, I'm very shook about the whole bugs thing too like all the other classes have been played a lot of them um yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, Theban, it's a breath of fresh air for me to not have to see a single bug for a change. <laughs> Chat immediately goes Dons, and I'm for a second, I was thinking like, Dons? What are Dons? Whoa, Cuckoo! Whoa, coming in. Cuckoo, coming in hot. Thank Dang. you for the 10 gifted subs. Wow, that's really nice. Welcome, really sir. Nice. Thank you for your Thanks efforts. For being here, a legend has just approached the chat. Let's give Cuckoo a warm welcome. A trailblazer in the space, without a doubt. And YGG's been showing up and showing out. We had Sedano on here earlier giving us the, the update on the Philippines, being completely transparent, which I love. Ooh, what, what was that? Oh, wow. Okay, so what do we got here? Oh, wow. Is that hairs that, there? Meditate, uh, or sorry, Tersic is uh, going ham there in round one. Yep. Uh, hair plus what uh, he played? Was that two hairs? It was, I think, a hair uh, and like a black uh, pigeon post, I'm pretty sure, followed by sandal leaf bug. Mm -hmm. So Terasix... Sandal plan... uh, cat tail. I probably got that wrong, though, because the chat always corrects me. Yeah. <laughs> so Terasix's game plan is pretty straightforward, right? Where like he just kind of wants to go through the front and get to that mech. And look at this double bone sail play from Dizzy Boy. That's very clutch here. Um... Well, it's still going to die. Uh, mm -hmm. He will get two cards out of it, though, which is really going to help his bird backdoor sit situation. And the plant up front goes down. It wow. It's last stand. Ooh, he drew another card, too, on that plant. Interesting egg here from Terasik. He doesn't have any energy left. I think he was trying to get lower health. So here it is. Well, he got. This is going to get super interesting. But again, if this, if he had the scaly spoon here, mm -hmm. we might be looking at a different situation. Um, yeah. Oh man, that damage doesn't even hit the mech. I think this is, is just going to be bad, bad that's news it. for Terasik in this one. I think that's it. Yeah, like I said, no scaly spoon, not a lot of options. There's the egg. Even flexes Terasik's with left. the other egg. Very nicely done by Dissy Boy. Yeah. And as we expected, this was really going to be a one-sided matchup here. Yeah, for sure. And I think we'll see a resign, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's Saves it. himself the, uh, the massacre there. So game one was, you know, it was, it was nice for Terasek. He drew the cards that he needed to and whatnot. Game two was just a complete mismatch. I don't know. The more I look into this series, I feel like Dizzy Boy has the slight advantage in terms of the axes that he brought and the matchups like he can create. Uh, but Terzik, though, like we've seen him clutch games out and that's what we're kind of looking for. I wonder what he's going to change up in this game three because he can't run back the double plants. No, I agree. I agree with that. The mech threat is too much, but then again, the anemone threat is also a problem. I don't, that's, that's what I was trying to say earlier is I was like trying to piece together how he deals with this array of axes that Dissy Boy has. And he's got two plants, a bird, a bone sail, dusk, and a winghorn bone sail. He, dusk, he's also the one who has a scaly spoon plant too. Who? Dizzy Boy. Dizzy Boy has one. I know. Yes. I know. Dizzy Boy. Not so he, his, his, his toolkit is insane. Bro, That's he's what equipped. I mean. He's stacked. He's stacked. And he came prepared. The mm. YGG clan, they came prepared. And I think, for one, I think Terasic has to bust out the discards. I just feel like he needs those on his side intuitively. It's just a matter of what you put with it. Yeah, we need to see that bone tail boy come out. That's yeah. his clutch axie here. And there it is. We, we see got... it. Oh, He's got it. Boy. 
He's, he he's said, gonna... you know what, man? You might have a bird, <laughs> but I have discards, and I just don't give an F. I'm going to try to kill your bird with my mech, and then I'm going to try to kill your mech with my mech, and then I'm going to try to kill your plant last, probably. Mm -hmm. I think this is the best situation for Terra's sake. Yeah, like, I do too. He needs, he needs these coin flip games. Uh, yeah, because he Because he's like really behind in terms of matchups with most of his teams. Uh, yeah, completely agree. I think it's, you know, the worst thing he could have seen was running back into the anemones, which I think if Disney Boy did that would have been an absolutely, like, insane play on his part. Yeah. Um, but those aren't here, so I, I truly think this was probably the best case scenario for a game three for Tersic, and we'll just have yeah. to see where the cards fall and how they execute. So, this is, yeah, game three, 1-1 one, one for Tersic. And Dissy Boy, YGG versus Meditate Grand Finals. It's been a very rough road for both of these guys to get here. They fought against a lot of extremely talented players and individuals. Whew. This is a, this is a key moment, man. Whoever wins is gonna be one win away from taking it all. The pressure is gonna be on the opponent after that. Yeah, this is like a 50-50 for me. If I if I look at it, I'm like, eh, it's really this one can really go either way. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to be fair, after I saw Terasik win with just one Dusk versus like almost three full HP Axes, I give him the edge here just because I I could imagine him somehow doing magic with this midliner again should he lose oh, yeah. his mech early on because i just saw he he executed so well in that situation so i feel like he's got a backup plan um if on the other hand dissy boy loses his bird before the mech it seems very very problematic for him from then on out yeah it's just really gonna come down to the back doors and we've seen the turn to four card back doors many times i mean this, it was dizzy boy who got three games in a row with turn two back doors and annihilated spam and rice so and so, so right right now it's the backdoor masters against each other yeah so who's but the to be fair backdoor? though elijah maybe dizzy boy ran out of gas you know like at some point you know the odds have to balance itself out right i mean you would think but you again, would think you're right you're no right it could land on black like 10 times in a row, you know, it's Bro, Axie Infinity is a brutal game. It it does not, it does not. Kissy Boy ran out of gas, you know, like at some point, you know, the odds have to balance itself out, right? I mean, you would think, but then You would again, think, you're right, you're no right. It, it could land on black like 10 times in a row, you know, it's Bro, Axie Infinity is a brutal game. It It does not, it does not care about your feelings. So any it's fair it's fair game anything can happen. So I think if for the Winghorn uh, Bone Sale to actually one v three again, he's gonna need to get some super clutch yams that land on Agreed. that dusk. That's that's what um that land on the dusk. You mean that land on the other axes? I mean not on the bird. The bird has pigeon post, so that could be. Oh, like a the problem, land on the but... mech and the yeah on the planet yeah. because that's true. That's that's mech. one thing he yeah, had for him. Mech, sorry. Yeah, on the mech. That's one thing that he had going for him in that time he pulled it off. He had gotten really great yam distribution, which just allowed the chipping away of everything, you mm -hmm. know, to actually work. I do think DC Boy's frontline plant not so useful uh, in this matchup. Like the bone sale, no. Okay, okay here we, we go. Got, we, we got some cards. We got action. We got action. Ooh, aggressive turn one. From Disney going Boy. and also like for Terasik, and this is one thing that I have said uh, before about him, or I haven't said before, but I've kind of questioned is using both of the grass snakes right away makes the mm. three card chomp combination way harder to do. Yeah. So I don't love that. Mm. Um, and the plant's dead, yeah. so he didn't really waste any time there in using his mech cards. But now the mech is probably going to draw everything. That is a very good point. That is a very, very good point. Because he eliminated the plant, which actually doesn't split draws yeah. if it favors these two axes, and we actually saw nothing. Yeah. And that was a six-card combo from Dissy Boy to kill one plant. All energy and six-card combo. He got one back, 
from the leaf bug. But Terrasic knows that there's no combo that Dizzy Boy can do to, you know, kill his mech right now. Yeah, not right now, but it depends on what happens next round. Now, yeah. he didn't get the draw, okay? He doesn't have the, here, yeah. the other mech card, so he's kind of forced into passing, but he knows he's not really under threat. All the mech cards have been played. Doesn't need to do anything weird on his uh, dusk here. He doesn't have a play, so he just has to, like, move on here. Yeah. And this is one of those situations where even if you did have cards on your dusk, you're not really playing it. Because you know your opponent's like kind of depleted, and you don't want to yeah. run into that frontline plant with like one bone sail or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, you know... Tension's high, man. The ten that yeah. I, I can feel it myself. I feel like I'm the one playing here, and my heart's beating. Yeah, so but fast. you know what? It depends on if the plant cards fly out of the deck or if the bird cards fly out of the deck. Because if the plant cards fly out, oh shit. The bird cards. Oh shit. They came. He got they sure the draw. Did. Terrasic, Terrasic, Terrasic. This is, uh, this is, this Rip. is going to be an RIP. That's it. It's a wrap. Yeah, there's nothing he can do here. It's a wrap. Yeah. That's it. He's, he's so far behind. Like, yeah, bro, if he, you think you can clutch this one? I, the mech's going to die. That's a good thing. The problem here is like, how does he? No, no, no. What are you chomping for? Oh, okay. He goes to the front. I thought he was chomping. Yeah, he's so he's splitting everything up again. He's keeping yeah. things alive that aren't going to be able to do anything. There's so much the energy mech. now. Bro, he, I, if he wins this game, no. Boy, he... He's getting egged. Bro, he's getting egged, but he's planning for it. As if he knows it's coming. Because uh -huh. he's playing all of his cards. Yeah. But that bird is still alive. It's still alive, but it's getting weaker and weaker. And the mech that is mech dying. That mech is slow, too. <laughs> the mech is... It's closer than I would have thought. Okay, I'll say that. So that's going to do 8 damage to the mech. The mech is not going to stand a chance next turn. He's going to winghorn again. But can he oh, deal he's with already this... dead, actually. Wait. But can he deal with this plant? Nah. I don't think he's so. got the cards on the bird. Yeah, yeah. He's already got the cards on the bird. Damn, yeah, I what mean, a that valiant was... effort. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. Who won? Two one for Disney Boy. So now Disney Two Boy one. is one game away from taking yeah. it all. Tearsake. Yeah. You know he's got the disadvantage in. I want to say in all the matchups that we've seen. Apart from like the double plants versus the anemones, right? Yeah. So that was the one clutch win that he had with his teams or whatever, like, you know, by prepare like playing that team first, expecting the anemones, getting it done, right? But now that Dizzy Boy knows what Terrasek is up to, it's become like an uphill battle. But again, like this is actually infinity. Anything can happen. That game could have literally just been that bird not drawing the fourth card. And then Man, I know. The I literally I said it right before it happened. I'm like, all right, what's gonna fly out of the deck here? Is it gonna be the bird or is it gonna be the plant? And um, yeah, he got him. He he got him right there. So wasn't Terasik down one uh two one two in the last time and he came back? I'm pretty sure he was down. He was down to um he won against spam three one. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I think he lost the first one. And then he had like the epic, some epic comebacks and just revert or uh, went on a tear, one yeah, three yeah. straight. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a very interesting game. I'm sure that the players will go into it very shortly. Um, while we're at it, uh, Elijah, I wanted to ask you, Yeah. what can we see from you in the future? Since you know it's not, it's very rare for people to get a chance to interact with you. Um. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I'll continue with everything Axie related. I think 2022 is going to be an amazing year for the game. There's so much in the works. We're talking V2 land. All that stuff is going to be dropping hopefully uh, sooner rather than later. Um, Merch? Actually content and building the best esports team in the space like that's it you know the best community best pvp community um interacting with other guilds like really we're all one big pvp community right like if you're an axie and you're passionate about arena then we're all in this thing together uh as far as meditate esports like 
I just, I'm so passionate about that. That's where my focus is, is like finding the right guys that we can build around, having fun training sessions, hosting tournaments. That's, that's where my heart is right now. Um, and seeing if there's other good games that come out. Like you guys know right. I'm passionate about Voxies, seeing what they do. And uh, right now Axie is the only game in town because they're, they've got an amazing product. They've executed. Everyone else is trying to play catch up. No one has really come close. So I, I want to see who, who shows up and who's the next, what's the next wave of something that's very entertaining and strategic, challenging and fun. Yeah, I'm I'm also excited for the future of Axie and all the LAN gameplay version two and stuff. And I'm, uh, you know, like you said, I'm I'm also looking out for some other games. You know, it's very fun to be early in it. It's a lot of these like blockchain okay. games. Uh, not only can you like benefit from it, you know, apart from just you know the creators benefit from it, but like just trying out new things, right? I feel like we're back in the Stone Ages again with these games. Right, and you get a fresh start where, like, you can be the best very quickly uh, if you're there. And someone else also mentioned merch. It was actually Mark who mentioned merch. Oh, what? yeah, yeah. Where did merch that come from? Will, so merch will be on the way. Um, I the rendition that's that's fresh right there. That looks hot. I'm not gonna it lie. Is. That looks good. Um, so the rendition I got done. I think not exactly turned out exactly the way I want. I posted like a fun picture of, of me wearing a hoodie the other day, but. I gotta do some more tweaking before I do a bigger, um, bigger production and start shipping them out. I'll definitely be doing some giveaways with them too for the diehard fans out there. You know, the first wave will be giving giving some out. But yeah, that'll be on the way. Meditate.gg, the website will be out soon. Uh, all kinds of stuff, man. Like we're we're at the very very beginning. It's exciting times, and that's it continuing to to fight in arena <laughs> i mean that's everything i wanted to hear but uh we got a game now game number four uh dc boy is up two one so it looks like terasic is just gonna run it back so is dc yeah. boy again yeah. like it's a coin flip situation but i will say you know the situation is looking like dc boy is favored about 55 to 60 percent i agree yeah Some uh, clutch, we're expecting some uh, clutch gameplay as well from both these players. I mean, it, it's not just about the lineups that brought these guys here, right? Like they had to make some freaking stone cold plays to get here. You actually want to talk about like what it takes to get this far into a tournament. That's earlier. right. Yeah, thanks for reminding me on that. Basically, what I was trying to say is, you know, Terzik pulled it off in the last series, but I was also a bit disappointed that he didn't try to switch it up more because generally like what i've seen is that to get this far or to win a tournament you have to have sometimes you have to have those moments where you pull out a team that like your opponent has never seen they've never seen you play it they're just totally not expecting it like i've had to do that against uh different back in the day i had to do that against ak and and prath app and axie gg guys at different points um against indes i did it I, t I actually i think you beat me in that series anyway but the point is is like i i if i play it as for instance i know that for me to have a chance in winning like i have to i cannot just give him what he is predicting and expecting i have to throw a curveball right so i'm not saying he should have veered too far away from this team but it seemed like it was the cards were stacked against him and I was kind of hoping to see him just like shake something up and try something different because right. I know for me, I've had success doing that in tournaments and also it puts your opponent on their back foot and that sometimes allows you to like read them better. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, now they're feeling uncomfortable. I just want a game. What do I think they're going to go to? Probably a comfort team. And then you counter that. Okay, let's see what's happening here. So we've got beast damage. Wow, this e boy, this is the second Wait game a second. in a row where he just attacked. Turn I know, one. He did. He and there's did. no yam. There's no yam. For sake. He had it too, but he didn't expect What is that leap bug bone sale? Yeah, that's that's weird. Interesting. Yeah. But does this break the shield though? It, it does. does break the shield. Yeah, he gets so a hair. Mm -hmm. Gets one mm -hmm. card back. But that plant But one hit. All needs here 
you know, he wants that toothless. If he draws a cat, oh, he doesn't have a cat. So he's got, he's got, yeah. But he needs that toothless to get the back door off. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then the game looks so clean because that mech of Dizzy Boy has already spent half a clip into that frontline plant. So That's it's right. only got enough gas to really get through the midline dusk. And oh, there it is, shit. he gets it. Oh god. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Now we'll have to see though, because isn't there there's another twin tail left for the mech, but other than that, that's most of his damage gone. And this mm -hmm. bird really did not get that much value. Um and he's gonna go down, no last stand, no nothing. Just straight dead poultry. And this plant as well hasn't drawn too many of its cards as well, including the cattail. So Dizzy Boy's uh, deck is kind of, you know... It's flat. Yeah, it's, flat. it's got a he's, lot of plant cards. Yeah, he's due for drawing a bunch of plant cards. I'm not expecting to see a whole bunch of mech damage rip off here. And because of that, um, I mean, if Terrasic's paying attention, he'll probably go for a clean pass, knowing that he'll most likely have the faster speed in the following round. Either a clean pass or the wing horn. Yeah, okay, he's just gonna do that. I don't know why he always plays these both of these Double at poison. once. I guess he's got the other extra energy in the chamber, so it's fine. Um, I mean, he's gonna draw a sneaky ray now. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And I think like what he just kills the mech, and then that's yeah. probably the end of this game. Yeah, man. Exactly. I, I think we were gonna. Have, we. I don't want to speak too soon, but we might have a game five in what has been. A super Dude. fun competitive tournament, and that's just really what you want to ask for and what you want to see. This he boy, does he go for the anemones? Does Tersek switch it up to like a like a plant? Or what are we gonna see? Mm, I, I, I think I, I'm think I'm thinking we see anemones, and then the question is, does Tersek make the stone like it's a clutch play? It's a scary play to switch over to your plants if that's not your main team. But I could be wrong about both of those things, and. Mm -hmm. You know, they're Ooh. both down to the wire here, so it's a question Did... of, like, risk oh. versus reward. Yeah, I, I I mean, you're a plant expert in who's uh, beaten, like, a mech before, right? Uh, can this plant do it? Uh, are, what are you talking about, this game? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I've already checked out of this game. This mech is going to be <laughs> Look insane. at that shield, though. Mm, not gonna I mean, that's matter. a lot of shield. I will say, you know, it's closer than we thought. I mean, I, I mean, he's know. gonna draw another set of bone sails here. If he, no, what if he right. draws, right. if he draws two sneaky raids. No, you're totally right, bro. It's definitely possible. I shouldn't have said that so soon because you're right. I mean, look at this. Plant and he gets a crit. Get the crit. This might be the end of the series. That's it. He got two, two sneaky, sneaky raids. raids. Yeah, I don't think that. The, I don't think Tersic's gonna win this one. Yeah. Hold on, no, that's not enough damage. He can't do enough damage to his mech. Yeah, but like, then what? Then then he next still... one he draws actual cards and not sneaky raid. Okay, I get that, but look at how much health... I don't know, he's got four energy next round too. He does have four energy, he's gonna draw another set of bone sails again. No, he's winning this game, No bro. way, the plan done plan. it! Dizzy Boy from YGG is gonna take down Dizzy this Dizzy Boy, man. you beast! Wow. You bloody wow. beast! Hats off. Hats on right now, but hats off to Dissy Boy. You killed it, bro. You killed it. And uh, I gotta say, you know, I'm really, I, I'm gonna say. That is my boy Elijah. We lost him. We've lost him. He's back. I'm back. I'm back. Get your camera on. I need to see your expression right now. This moment. I'm trying. I'm okay. All right. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. So my expression is fairly, is fairly neutral. I'm just like, wow, what a series, what a tournament. And honestly, I don't know when I got cut off. I was saying it's amazing to see a YGG guy come in here and take down this whole thing when it's a YGG inspired event. That's incredible, right? These guys have been out there in the trenches, putting in the work to help our Filipino brothers and sisters. And we got a guy coming in here who, you know, we're not even really seeing him, you know, I think he's been kind of low key, low key this season. Am I right or wrong about that as far as on the leaderboards?
Oh yeah, I mean I've seen him somewhere in the leaderboards like quite often. Uh, he's a okay. he's a very um, he's a she's a streamer as well. He's got a great community. Look at the chat right now; it's just popping off with his emo. E emo yes, oh, my gosh, that's it's awesome. going crazy. Yeah, I mean someone mentioned in chat as well. Like yeah, there was a turn where Terasek he just had to pass right. Like he's got a full HP mech. All he needs to draw is like a full four clip and then like kind of end the game there but maybe he got a little too trigger happy knowing that he's a plant versus a mech and he's just gonna win or something but um yeah mistakes were made in the end but this he boy you know he put himself in a position to take the w and he did exactly that this guy got it done completely deserved first winner of the meditate charity invitational ever Yeah, man, he killed it. He really did kill it. He adapted well. He changed the plan. He did what he had to do. Um, and there was never a dull moment, honestly, in this tournament. Like, that's that's something that you can be really happy about as an Axie fan. I mean, I really enjoyed every single match. And I look forward to doing way more tournaments in the future. Uh, this is just the very first of our Meditate journey as far as hosting tournaments. And... It was for a great cause, and we were able to raise money. I know we got some donations from doing this and, and you know, able to highlight the YGG fund and what they're doing. And, again, it's never too late to donate anything that you can give. We had Sedano come on here and talk about the efforts being made, how they're working with uh, even some high-level authorities over there in the Philippines to get – the resources out to the ones who need it most and they're executing on all fronts medicine food water everything so uh how do we drop those links real quick in the chat uh also can we do... get dizzy boy on here for an interview like oh yeah quick... if he yeah. if he's available oh yeah and like play a game like winning with the one with the god mech versus mortal plant and I ate my own words because I, I kind of didn't look at the energy and the card count, but I was like, oh yeah, this one's over. And I was wrong. I was so, so wrong. That immortal plant came through in the clutch and got it done too indestructible, even against a mech. You're not is... the only one who 1v1'd a god mech with a plant anymore. Yeah, well, it's a prestigious club. <laughs> <laughs> There's two people in that club now. <laughs> So we got, we got any news on Dissy Boy? Still waiting. Okay, cool. Well, well, while we're at it, why don't you you know fill us in one last time uh, about on chain monkeys and you know the charitable things that they've been able to do as they have as they were the ones who sponsored this um, event. Yeah, let's just show the winner monkey actually for Dissy Boy. Uh, let's show what he's won. He's won a nice. monkey that has a floor right now point three five Ethereum, so a couple thousand bucks roughly. There it is, bad looking mofo right there. And uh, the thing about that is everyone who owns a monkey is gonna get airdropped a second one with brand new art with the similar features in 2022. So if I was Dissy Boy, I mean, obviously he can sell this if he wants to, no problemo. Someone will buy it very quickly off of the floor because the community is very active over there. Um, but to be fair, if you hold it, you get a whole nother NFT in a few months um, or at some point in 2022. And uh, yeah, basically like you're making money on top of your money. So you buy one of these, you get another one and, and those are going to be sick, sick, sick looking. And they're going uh, to have other utilities as well, right? In the future. Uh, so. Oh, for sure. And I think they'll get involved in the metaverse. I think there'll be some gaming stuff involved. I'm, I'm talking with them and I want to help in that department any way that I can. I love OCM. I love the project. I have 20 monkeys. Yo, uh, just show the OCM2 real quick, and then we'll go back to the YGG stuff. But we're really just hyped that they contributed. They donated five Ethereum to the fund. They put this event on for us. And it's cool to be able to offer an NFT for first place on a community that's doing good things in the world. And bam, you're going to get one that looks like that airdropped for free for every monkey that you hold. And I just think that's amazing. So big shout out to them. I think we have commands in here, Rise. So there you go. We got the Discord channel right there, the Twitter for Onchain Monkey. Just drop by. You're going to see what I'm talking about. It's like the best community. Um, I, I love the, those people. I love the Discord. And yeah, just play around. Find out for yourself. Do your own research. Don't take my word for it, right? You need to be smart in this space. And find the projects that you believe in 
invest in those ones, not what other people believe in per se. Got to be the captain of your own ship. So, did we drop the links for the um, I for the yes funding? So in chat, you can use that Ronin account to donate. Um, there's an ETH address, and then you can also use the Stream Elements tip, which will oh, yeah. all be forwarded to um, the relief. Hi, welcome. Missy boy. What's Yo! up, man? What up, guys? Hello, hello. <laughs> so hyped. excited. I love it. I love the He's energy. <laughs> Missy boy, I'll tell you one thing right now. I'm just glad that you didn't win a single game with Anemones in the finals. But uh, <laughs> other than that, congratulations, my man. You know, you take the first ever Meditate Invitational. We are so happy uh, to have experienced such amazing games, uh, honestly, Elijah. Oh man, it was a blast. It was so fun and I'm so happy to hear that you're so happy um, because I know what you went through. Like playing an Axie tournament is tough. A lot of pressure, a lot of ups and downs. You brought your A game, you switched things up when you needed to. We just broke a thousand viewers on the stream, which is crazy. I I'm assuming you probably sent some people over here and like dude is dancing, he's hyped, he's loving it. And that's just amazing. Uh, hats off to you, good sir. How are you feeling? Tell us about your victory. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just so happy that, that honestly, I was so happy that I was able to use the anemones in the semifinals because uh, I feel like the anemones are kind of dying in the like leaderboards or in the top 100. And then I know there's not much of like people using the cottontail versions. And I know like um, Theban doesn't support it as well, so I'm just like really glad that that it turned out so well. Like I wasn't expecting that to work, but yeah, because on the like the recent tournament I lost with that comp. But the the thing that I wanted to do is like to prove anyone that Anemones are still alive. So yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm really so happy. By the way, can I can I introduce my cousin because he helped me like focus on the game as well. So, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He hey, was, he was cor cousin. correcting my energy. Oh, <laughs> he's counting your energy. This guy got a, this guy hire someone to count his energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, my, my cousin is the best. He got me a water. He got me coffee. He's the best. So nice. you need to, you need you need to get a cousin as well. If you guys don't have any cousin, ask your like relatives to make one. So, <laughs> wow, Dissy yeah. boy, what a legend for coming on here and and. Closing out this tournament, man. That was that was amazing. Um, do you are you streaming? Do you stream a lot? You do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do stream daily. Oh, by the way, I'm just gonna plug my my channel. Yeah, I, I was am, just gonna I, say. By the way, do, do yeah, that. I am I am DC boy. I'm a Filipino action streamer, a pure breed one, six out of six parts, and a mystic part somewhere down here. If you guys wanna check out my stream, <laughs> I do stream daily on Twitch, um, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Philippine time. So if you guys have any questions, wanna hang out with us. Feel free to drop by. Let's nice. go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There's your champion right there, guys. Uh, you know what, DC Boy, thank you again for stopping by, letting everybody hear, you, especially your enthusiasm. Dude, we love how love to hear that. You know, that's what we expect from these events, right? And like how hyped you were. Um, actually, one last question before we let you go. On a scale from one to ten, how difficult did you find this event? Um Honestly, the, the thing that I was always afraid of is the the God Mac, the one made by my by my good friend Mr. Spam, and I feel like I don't really have the the comp to counter that because I I played with that comp and the successful comp that I used was the discard comp, the Pocky Aqua, but uh, the owner of the Pocky Aqua, Aqua that I was using, he actually need to use it, so I changed my plans and switched to the Anemones and. Yeah, like miracles do happen. <laughs> wow, that, that's that's great. <laughs> that was such a clutch uh, switch there, and uh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. But by the way, can I can I think? Um, because um, uh, those axes are are supported by um YGG. So shout out to YGG for for helping me with those axes and the rare like cottontail anemones. Thanks as well to King Copy. He's a very very good guy. He just gifted like subs as well on um, I, I just saw he just so. gifted a hundred subs in chat. King yeah, Copy. He, 
He's the guy. He's the guy. He's a very good friend. And yeah. Wait, so, he gifted how many? Sure a 100, Elijah. Whoa, 100. What? You get out of here. That's crazy. Thank you. Insane. Thank you. Thank you. This isn't even my channel. This is Steven's channel. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you i think everybody just got a sub but yeah that's amazing to hear that um i i think i've seen him around in spam channel too and the fact that i was able to help you out like you know it, it's amazing how everything just pieces together right like you were gonna play this bug team then you don't play it you play like something that you're comfortable with like really comfortable with the anemones and then it clutches you through what you thought was your worst matchup right then you get yeah, over yeah. that hurdle and now you have the confidence going to a finals and you were just able to like do what you want to do like everything just kind of like fit like it is it, like it was your destiny to win this <laughs> yeah yeah it's really cool it's really cool we needed a ygg champion this is a, this is a ygg That's crazy inspired event man it's all perfect it's all perfect yeah it's really perfect That's good. yeah <clears throat> all, right. all right well Take the trophy back to Gabby and YGG and send them our love. Take the monkey trophy back. Hold that monkey. I, I, I'm <laughs> telling you, hold it. I'm, I'm hyper yeah. bullish. I'm actually going to tell my mom that we're going to get our first ever monkey for our family. So that's very cool. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all right, guys. Um, Dissy Boy, thanks for coming on. And congratulations, my friend. And we'll see you on your stream and in the Axie community. Yeah. All right. Cheers, Peace. guys. Much love, much love. Peace. Peace. Um, Theban. Dude, what a great guy. My oh, gosh. Dude, he's awesome. Dude, yeah. that was amazing. That was one of the best interviews. And I just like, he just came in here with all that energy. You know, sometimes I, I, I go to winners and they're all like, oh, but yeah, so. And this guy just comes in blazing, like, dude, yeah, like, he I was killed so... this event. <laughs> yeah, he did. Love it. He was so hype, bro. That's, I, I love seeing that. And the truth oh, is, dude. like, <clears throat> you get a rush from winning a tournament, man. Yeah, like, even Indez, exactly. after he wins a tournament, I hear a little bit of an inflection in his voice. He's like, I could tell he's a little juiced up. Not <laughs> much. He doesn't show much, but a little bit. Okay. Yeah, man. That's so good. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm like, I, I thought I was going to sleep, but now I got all this adrenaline pumping through me. Like that last series, I thought I was the one in the game playing and I was getting all stressed out. But yeah, man, um, what a Bro, crazy event. How can we end this, uh, this, this thing? I, I'm thinking we do something special for everybody in here. How what do we have in the, what do we have in the pool? But what do we have in the pool? Well, I don't know. I don't know about everyone in here, but like, uh. You can consider, I don't know. You wanna, you wanna give like, I, I don't know, dude. It's, it's on you. I want to give away. Specialty. I want to give away an axie. Okay. Okay. Can we You're do that? You're gonna give away an axie. Oh yeah. wow. A good one, not a, not a. I want to give him away a good axie. A good axie, Jesus. Um. Okay. Um. So. All right. Zero. You, you got that. You're gonna handle it. Okay, do it. All right, I'll. Perfect. Uh, uh, can we? Can we play marbles? On can we Twitch? do that? Oh, on, on Twitch? Mar marbles. Yeah. How do I connect that? If I can connect that, I'll do it. You want okay, to share Steven's... my screen? Yeah. Okay, uh, marbles Twitch. So I need to like connect my Twitch to it or something. Here we go. Someone's gonna get an axie. Can you give me the link that way? Someone's gonna get a good axie. To it. The marbles. Do you, do you have it, Elijah? I don't have that game either. <laughs> I don't. Who can give us the marbles link? Chat's just popping off already as they wait for this free axie that Elijah has uh, generously. It looks like it's a whole thing, maybe. Dude, imagine putting 800 marbles in there. Guys, when Elijah says good Axie, you know it's a dank Axie. <laughs> he doesn't own bad Axies. Oh, we got the link. Okay, good. Okay. But don't we have a uh, don't we have a great Aqua we can give, like, or a good one, and uh, from the pool? Dude, I I need to get this game. Oh yeah, I do. I do have a lot of great 
axes. Perfect. We're gonna give him one from there. Okay, sure. Um, there has to be a better way to do this. Hold on, guys. I have a giveaway. I can do it just through my channel. So give. All right, you can tell us a, a, an old man story while you're at it, Elijah. While I take care of this. Um, what do I want to say? Well, one of the first tournaments I ever played, I won with AK against Indez in a team tournament where AK was the captain, and it was me and one other player, I think, and it was Indez and two other players, and we duked it out. And uh, I don't know where I'm going with that. That's just one of the earliest. So we're talking tournaments. That's just one of the earliest. How did you get into actually... Axie Infinity? What's that? How did you get into Axie Infinity? Oh, well, I had just been in crypto for like four years. So once I started seeing it circulate, yeah, Captain AK. I guess that was a homage to AK. But um, I've never in Indez in a tournament, though, in a, like in a 1v1. AK closed that one out for us. Uh, I took a game off of him. But... That's one of my most fond memories. And there's actually a YouTube video of me covering the highlights of it, like from way, way back. How did I get into Axie though? Great question. Uh, you know, I've been in crypto for four years. Once it started circulating, yeah, and this is the GOAT. Once it, for sure. Once I started, um, once it started circulating on Twitter, I just was like, what? What the hell is this thing? Like people were talking about the token and not even really about the game, but most more so like, What's AXS going to do? Like the token that just came out, it was like 55 cents. And actually I saw Crypto BitLord say, just bought a bag at AXS at 55 cents. See you all at $5. And I was like, okay, that's intriguing. Cause like he gets into projects and like, sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss, but it piqued my interest. I went into the discord. Like it was super, super chill. Like the discord was moving like a, a snail. Like occasionally something got said and then it would just be like, forever nothing would get said there's no no one even close to how many we have now some guy uh i don't even know if he's still around but he, he was like yeah you should play and i found out it was like 200 dollars for an entire team each of my axes was like 70 or 80 bucks i was like what the fuck i have to pay 200 dollars to play this game like that sucks and uh luckily i was intrigued enough that I had him help me pick out three axes. It was a plant, a reptile, and an aqua with snail shells, double talk, and thorny on the back line. And he loaded up the game for me and was telling me to just tell me what cards to play, even though his moves really made no sense. He's like, okay, just click this, click this. And I was like, okay. Um, and then I, that's it. Like I, once I kind of started to see the strategy, uh, I was hooked. And then I started making content, and now we're here. All right, well, <laughs> now we're here. Uh, hold on, I, I got it set up. I, I did. I had to do an experimental giveaway first, uh, and then um, I'm gonna. I, I I got it ready. So first, it had tickets on, so I'm gonna remove that, so no one has to use any tickets. You just have to write the command. Um. Uh, so one giveaway there we go so i'm gonna create this let's see if it's in chat do you guys see it okay so type in exclamation ticket to get in and you everybody will have one ticket all right and i will be giving doing the giveaway and the one lucky person is gonna get an axi and it's gonna be up to you to make sure that you get your uh uh ronin to us on over on discord or you can just uh directly message me and i'll get you your axie have them message you on twitch right yeah yeah on twitch, on twitch exactly twitch. have me the winner will message me directly on twitch damn there's a lot of people in here mm -hmm. all right once uh so it's 50 seconds has elapsed we'll give it like another minute or so and then i'm gonna close this giveaway Yo, it's been a crazy stream. Like we were staying steady at like what? What yep. was it? Eight, eight or nine hundred. We hit a thousand at one point. Mm -hmm. High energy, so much fun. Now, now it's hitting me. Now, bro, we've been going at it. Like we had like I think like <sighs> one break or two yeah. breaks or something. Like we've been yeah. going straight. There's been nonstop action. You know, we got like some of the best players in the game playing this. 
Yeah, uh, I know. Now I'm coming down from it. That was a rush. Yeah. That was 40 a rush. seconds, guys. You got 40 seconds to enter the giveaway. Man, what are we going to do next? What's our next tournament? We'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe there are some potential sponsors in chat who want to run an event. You know, you want to have yours truly do another one of these amazing Ooh. invitationals. Dude, I love invitationals personally. Yeah, I do too. I think that's the way, man. Like, it's just All so right. much cleaner. I am closing it now. So cl the giveaway is closed. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the screen with you here. Uh, give me a second. Share screen so you can see it. What am I looking at? Oh, you're sharing your screen. Okay. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. So just wow. put in that little thing in the middle there. Just the text. Only 261 people have entered. Like, bro, listen, you know, you know, you gotta, you gotta give chance to others too, right? That's it. Can I draw? Yeah. Zero draw. or am I waiting for you? Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. We're gonna draw a winner, and our winner is Toaster. what? Toaster. One, two, three, I feel like you literally just made an account this second <laughs> with that name <laughs> to enter the giveaway. Toaster, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. <laughs> Toaster, he, he probably just made the account. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toaster, make sure you message me on Twitch, okay? I know exactly who it is. Don't worry. Um, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to be, um, giving, giving that Axie away to you, sir. And <laughs> five accounts and didn't win. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get our, let's get our faces back up there. It's time to close up. It is. It's time, time for me. Oh, okay. I will stop sharing. All right. There we go. Oh, I think I lagged. Am I still sharing? I am. There we go. All right. Oh, okay. back. All right, guys. Well, it's been a wild ride. We had, I'm sure, a bunch of you donating. Uh, we'll take a look at the other Twitch one later and forward all of the donations from there, too. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here, for supporting the channel. It means a lot to us. Uh, Thank you for all the gifted subs as well. Elijah, you want to want for one last time? Just, hey, hell of a ride. Thanks to Onchain Monkey. I just posted them in the chat one last time. Their Twitter, their Discord. Love that community. Thanks to YGG. Thanks to Zero, our, uh, our homie for streaming this, our Meditate family and YGG family, everybody, everyone who participated for our first event. This was literally amazing so much fun i love all of you guys we're gonna have way more of these in the future Theban, i'm lucky i feel so lucky to have him as a co-founder at meditate and a teammate i learn from him every day and everyone else on our team you guys are amazing we love you so so much thanks for showing up and showing out and uh that's it i think we'll yep. see you in the next one yep see you in the next one guys have a good Peace. night everybody peace out Thank <laughs> you.